In this video, we're going to talk about Gunslinger Spawn's wild ride and its starts here and how Gunslinger Spawn blazes a trail of revenge. All right, my brothers and my sisters from another Mista, this is a comic book breakdown and review of Gunslinger Spawn issue number 1 through 25, brought to you by Rated Comics. Now, before we get into the content, this is a long video, and if you can watch this video in one city, one, you got my respect, you saved my life, and two, you are top G. But if you can't, I totally understand. We got lives. This is a long video, but I will put timestamps in description if you wish to go from issue to issue. If you want to have little bits of nuggets of this video, hey, you still top G in my book too. Also, link in description if you wish to buy Gunslinger Spawn and or any of our other limited print rated comic exclusives to add to your comic book collection. Support the art, support the industry. We got other cool comics too. And lastly, if you like the content we're throwing up, you know what to do. Like the video and subscribe to Rated Comics YouTube channel. And with all that being said, hey, let's get into the content. Now on this issue of Gunslinger Spawn, McFarlane tells a story in four acts, and this is the first act of Gunslinger Spawn. We begin with Gunslinger Spawn having a conversation with Spawn about what drew him into that island and what you were all about, but Spawn's got to go, you know? And this is goes back to, you know, Spawn's universe, issue number one. You can check out that review. I did do a full comic book review on that. Now, Gunspringer Spawn is like, whatever. He's in no mood to answer anyone's question. He goes to the patch in the, in the bushes and turns on his competition. Keep it, not his competition, his transportation. Keep in mind, he's still trying to figure out why he isn't in the year 1864 and how he got pulled into the future, you no, know, into present time. Now, his motorcycle runs dead, probably because he ran out of gas, but Sunrise is about to come up and he'll need some cover. Meanwhile, we see Taylor having a conversation with Mr. Santo, his employer, about, hey, put your phone away, I'm gonna head out, lock everything up before you leave, and get off your phone, customers love it when you pay attention to one-on-one. -on -one. You sound like my dad, Mr. Santo. No, I sound like your boss, enjoy your evening. So he leaves, a while later, Taylor's friends come in like, hey, your boy, you know, come party with your boys, it's a party at Billy's tonight when you're off keep in mind that's when they said when you're off taylor decides now is the perfect time let's do this yeah buddy they drive off in the car gunslinger spawn is behind and he gets to the edge of town as he pushes his bike and he's pissed because he never had to do this with the horse i love the humor between the gap in time i think that's hilarious so meanwhile at the party they're drinking they're bonding over burgers and junk food and fast food they talk about fart jokes and it smelled you shard himself but that reminds me of college days when it was cheap beer and jack-in-the-box tacos that got me through those late night cravings i mean come on who, who I, never mind don't judge me i'm sure someone's watching this video no Knowing Jack in the Box tacos were damn good late at night. Anyways, back to the review. Taylor's friends are puking because his bros are like, dude, you shouldn't pregame like that. Taylor's like, you're such a lightweight. They drop him off back at work. And he sees that the that the shed, there's light coming out of it. He's like, dude, I thought I locked it. So he goes in to check it out and he sees something that was just beautiful. It was the motorcycle of his dreams. He's like, where'd you come from, baby? Click, clack, click. You know, gun stickers right. Hold up! Put your hands where I can see them, boy! And that's a horrible Western accent, but I have to do it, you know? It, it shocks the heck out of Taylor. He's like, what's your name, son? Taylor, which is that your first or last? No, Bartlett. Taylor Bartlett, that's my full name. First and last name, sir. You got squaring legs. I got a question for you. And he's like, okay, what's up? Like, he gets the vibe he's not going to be killed. Do you know anything how to fix that contraption? And it's the bike. And after a brief examination, Taylor's like, dude. You're out of gas. Don't mess with me, boy. What you talking about gas? <laughs> I, <laughs> sorry, that kind of humor reminds me of uh, in Cobra Kai with Johnny Lawrence, how he's so stuck on the 80s for anyone who's watched that show. And he just tells his students, you know what? Download the music, send it to the internet. You guys know what episode I'm talking about in season one. But anyways, in the borderline between Mexico and Arizona, there's a huge private museum that's dedicated to those that ruled the earth millions of years ago dinosaurs and it's these angels discussing that Kalishiosho's misguided attempts to recruit a new hell spawn backfired what's the plan now and they're discussing in this wide panel art that they have plans for gunslinger spawn and they want gunslinger spawn to join them on their side for their cause and their purpose that they're going to include gunslinger spawn but now they got to figure out a way to how to bring him in but how do you suppose we do that it has something to do with planning a public affair but todd mcfarland notes that this is coming in issue number three so this is in the future of gunslinger spawn meanwhile 
we get back to Taylor and Gunsminger Spawn having a conversation like, hey, so you're telling me I got to figure out gas stations, tires, and highways and all that, then I could keep on traveling. Yes, you know, but you got enough horsepower in your bike and he's like I know of the power of a horse it's like no not that kind of horse I'm talking about like anyways look if you don't know what I'm talking about just google it and he's like what's a what's a google and of course he doesn't know what a google is does this brother even have a cell phone no he doesn't so gun speaker spawn expresses frustration I got some places to be I need to get to like the twin butts because there's something buried there and I need to deal with it and he's like you mean those twin butts and he's Gunsinger Spawn gets pissed and he busted out a strap to Taylor and he's like, wait a minute, you tell and Taylor realizes what's going on. Are you telling me you can't read? And a cool air remains silent for the longest time, then Gunslinger Spawn makes his confession. No, I can't read. And the way he survived all this time, because Taylor asked him, how'd you survive all this time? Is he um opens up his jacket and shows his arsenal of weapons. And the reason why my hat's so tall, because I got this knife right here. And Taylor's like, that's a big knife. And he, should I be scared right now? And Gunslinger Spawn postures himself. He's like, no, not if you're one of them. But let's get back to my riding machine. Can you get it started for me? He's like, I told you I can't. And Taylor's like, I told you I can. I got some equipment in my dad's garage. I could tune that puppy up real nice. Perfect, let's go to your house. But Taylor's like, wait a minute, I can't do that. I have to let my dad know that I'm coming home and I'm not allowed to come home until daddy says it's okay. It's a very weird, it's a very weird response. Now, meanwhile, Gunslinger Spawn gets ambushed by Angel and this fight is awesome. The art detail, the collateral damage, and just like, I mean, even though they say Gunslinger Spawn is the weaker out of the spawns, this guy definitely holds up his own and he goes in for the kill shot, the angel blocks it, but then he, he's, he rarely misses his next shot when he sees the opportunity to go for the open head and instantly kills the angel. I love how Taylor's like, okay, uh, I just witnessed all this happening, but the only thing that makes sense right now is to escape. And Gunslinger Spar is like, Taylor, get your ass back here, boy! So <laughs> Okay, I might have to stop with the with the with the accents. And Terry's like, "Yes, sir. I was bringing your hat right back. Don't 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 hate on me. Mighty kind of you, boy. Here, hold this. Hold the gun." And he teaches him a lesson on how to properly kill an angel. You can't shoot him in the chest because it don't kill him. You gotta go straight for the head. Shoots him in the head, and just for good measure, thum, thum, throws a knife at his at his head because bullets don't stop him. You know what I mean? And he offers Taylor a chance to give it a try. You want to use him for target practice? No, I'll trash. Okay. Suit yourself, and then we learn that their their bodies dissolve into air because, according to Gunslinger Spawn, it's to hide the evidence so make sure humans don't know what's going on. So now Gunslinger Spawn's like, "All right, let's get this gas. Let's go home." And it's a full tank that Tyler has to pay for, and they get home and unannounced. Now Gunslinger Spawn's like, "Don't worry, your pa will understand." So as Taylor opens the door and apologizes. He is stunned to see that there's a gathering in his dad's living room with these angels. And I recognize that silver, that gold angel from, uh, I don't know if it's from, I believe from King Spawn and Spawn's universe. It's just a sight to see. And his dad's like, what are you doing here? I told you, you can never come home until I get you. Are you dumb? Are you an idiot? And they're like, we know he's your son, but we can't have any humans interfering. We can't have, we cannot have any humans knowing that we're here. Taylor calls out for his dad and his dad could just look down in disbelief and shock and defeat knowing that your son, I can't help you, man. This is your fault. You have one thing to do. And he's like, dad, please. And then they're like, take him outside and bury him. And that's when Gunslinger Spawn comes in and is about to be some action. And that's where the first act of this book ends right here. Now, I'm going to leave a little meat on the bone with you guys for this book because this is a lot of book. And there's three more acts. There is the lynching, which is a story about an old west where Gunslinger Spawn survived on vengeance and on a bounty hunter life and what happened to her sons. That was good, but it wasn't my favorite. My two favorites of this one are weapons. It's a story about, it's one of the inventive ways to show how Gunslinger spawned, the why behind his bullets, and what his bullets do, and how he evolved. I, I, I'm not gonna spoil that, because I gotta leave that meat on the bone for you guys. And then finally, my personal favorite story, A Small Gift. It's a story about a young child being bullied in a salon. It's a story of bullying and retribution as Gunslinger Spawn corrects the wrong Western style. Now, that is the most gangster story in my opinion. Link in description if you guys wish to purchase a book because I always love when if you guys decide to purchase this book from RatedComics.com. Link in description, obviously for biased reasons.
you know, support the art, support the industry. What's my conclusion on this? I mean, I think this, it's not King Spawn, but this is an issue you want on your shelf right now. The artwork alone is worth every penny, but the storyline that contributes to Spawn's time as it provides that, like a, like a fish out of water kind of, like kind of deal from 1800s to now, 200 years later, is funny. And you can have a read of this comic several times over and just appreciate it. I think it's great. I enjoyed it. Once again, it's not King Spawn. If King Spawn were a ribeye, I have no problem with the New York strip steak either. We begin this issue where we left off in issue number one. Gunslinger Spawn impales one of the angels in the head and tells Taylor to run. That element of surprise is short lived because he can ambush maybe one more angel before the other angels plan their attack. An angel attacks Gunslinger with the razor edge staff. <laughs> that pose is pretty badass while you admire the art. Gunslinger reaches inside his jacket and tosses his knives to another angel's head, delivering a deadly blow. He doesn't want to fight anymore and for the angels to pack up their things, or wings, and leave. Since they're angels, otherwise we could do this dance all day. All right, Captain America. The other angel's like, you're right, let's finish this dance. She hits Gunslinger Spawn with the blast, he falls back, and if it weren't for him doing a slight jerk and or shift, the spear would have impaled his heart. Another angel proclaims, before he moves, kill the demon! Heaven's warriors reacted a second too slow and bam bam bam! He shoots her in the chest. He knows the shots won't kill an angel as established in issue number one, but it buys him some time. Angel tells Gunslinger, drop the weapon or the boy dies while wielding his sword to his neck. Gunslinger tells him, I don't care about the boy, so go right ahead. In retrospect, he knows that the angel cares about their own, so he plucks the injured angel's wings like pulling a thick weed from the ground. You can tell the emotion that this angel's given off that he does care about that angel. Gunslinger says to the angel, the marks on your armor show that you bonded with this one. She'll never fly again, but if I pull the other wing, she goes insane. You got two seconds to release the boy. What a decision to make. Angel lets go of Taylor and he runs towards Gunslinger Spawn. He tells the other angels, you can take one if you're wounded, but the other stays here. They proceed to do that. Take the wooden angel and leave the other one behind. Those angels will be back in larger numbers to get the revenge and Gunslinger Spawn knows that. But he has a few questions to ask the other angel because he's not going to be around for when they do return. The interrogation begins. They both know this angel's going to die. And Gunslinger threatens things will get worse if he doesn't tell him what he needs to know. The first question is, why does every faction he comes into contact with are acting like they're on fire? Something big is going on. He knows he's not the only one that got dragged from a different time. How did we get here? Dying Angel's response is, Spawn! Spawn did this! And Gunslinger doesn't buy that bull jive answer because hell don't give away that kind of power, boy! Dying Angel tells him that everyone is mobilizing to stop Spawn and that he's telling the truth. He asks the Angel about why is he here, buddying up with the Bartlett group. He wants that answer because he's trying to locate Bartlett. Taylor's dad shoots Gunslinger Spawn from behind and tells Taylor, get out of here, boy. I don't know why I like saying boy at the end. It's just funny. He's in pain. Taylor and his dad argue. The dying angel knows she doesn't have much time left and impales Gunslinger Spawn from behind. If she got to go, he got to go with me too. Why I gotta be from behind? Why not from the front? Taylor begs for his dad to do something and dad tells his son to get out of grown folk business. Gunslinger's getting some haymakers landed on him. Taylor launches himself on the angel. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. Get off of me, human, says the dying angel. Gunslinger sees an opening in this distraction. I'm going to make this hurt, he says, and rips both of the angel's wings off her back. The truth about this ripping of the wings is that there is no greater disgrace nor pain higher than getting both wings removed. It causes disgrace, insanity, and certain death. Dying angel has a few minutes left before she takes her last breath. How do I get back home, he asks her. Bam! Taylor's dad shoots her in the head. He tells Gunslinger to put his hands where he can see them. Taylor wants to know why is his dad doing this? Gunslinger knows the answer, cause he's a half-breed cut from the same cloth as the Bartlett's from my time. Gunslinger prompts Taylor's dad to tell his son the truth about who they really are. 
corrupting and poisoning minds of others like what they did to my sister. Kayla does put his dad on the spot. Is this true? Is this why mom left you? She said you lied to her about everything and you were never good to her. Put that gun down before I do what I did to her, says Taylor's dad. What a hell of an implied moment. Now Taylor holds his dad at gunpoint. Gunslinger wants Taylor to pull the trigger because Taylor's dad doesn't care about no one. And if this were reversed, Taylor's dad would have pulled the trigger by now on his own son. Shoot him now, Taylor. Taylor pauses for a moment but doesn't have what it takes to shoot his own dad after the stare down. On the flip side, his dad pulls out his shotgun and seems to have no hesitation about shooting his own son. Gunslinger reaches for something and shoot, throws a knife in the back of daddy's head. Instant kill, in shot, Taylor holds his dad, let him be. He's dead, says Gunslinger Spawn. Taylor yells to him, he hates him, and Gunslinger is totally fine with it. He did what was necessary in his own eyes. Not to mention, this will pass. I'm going to leave a little meat on the bone with this book. Link in the description if you wish to add this comic book to your collection. We do get a bit of toilet humor here, pun intended, between Gunslinger Spawn and Taylor. It, it's kind of funny. Gunslinger Spawn number two is exactly what you want from a Spawn book. A whole lot of action which also happens to drive the larger story plot. That escalated violence only enhances the ramifications and the consequences of this fight too. Gunslinger made things personal and messy. You have to imagine things will only get worse when Heaven's forces return. Now, another reason the action has such an impact on the plot is not that much else happens in the issue, and that's totally okay because it does move the story forward. There's still clear direction, and it's going from a different pace from main spawn line, the King Spawn with Sean Lewis, and it's a good way to separate the series from other spawn titles. The characters who survived Gunslinger Spawn will certainly cross this path again, but whether it be sooner or later, we don't know, and that's not a bad thing, and I totally dug this book. We begin this issue in a Jurassic Park setting kind of meeting. This guy is talking about we hope to get to Gunslinger Spawn first before Coelissi Yosha, obviously, but that didn't happen. So they shifted their presence and their direction where it needed to be shifted to on the whereabouts of the other cell spawns that came through the void at the same time as Gunslinger Spawn. Spawn, She Spawn, Jim, and all the others, that's not our target right now. But Gunslinger Spawn is ours. And the guy that's doing all the talking in this one is his name is Theus. But who he's talking to is Dakota. And that's what she's been brought in for. To bring down Gunslinger Spawn. She and her pets specialize in these types of hell spawns. And as Cyrus tells Theus, you're out of your mind. We didn't come here to be sidelined. Not by you. And especially not by her. Cog screw this up. And we're going to make it right. So we're going to get to Gunslinger Spawn. And Dakota's like, uh-uh. Not going to happen. And... This girl, this is pretty badass looking right there. She's, I mean, obviously hot, but in also an imposing kind of way that even mysterious, you just don't know what's up with these pets. So she tells Saya that it's not gonna happen, but you still bring lots of value to the table, but that's why I'm here for. I'm here for Gunslinger Spawn. But you're a smart man, and deep down you know we can take better care of the situation than you can. And that's what Theus tells Cyrus. Do yourself a favor and just stay out of it, and you might just be handsomely rewarded. Now Cyrus begrudgingly abides, and he leaves without saying another word. So Theus is like, well, that kind of went well, right? And Dakota's like, oh man, it's exhausting having to constantly stroke every male ego. And he's like, I'll let that comment go, but right now, we need to exploit any weakness we can find against Gunslinger Spawn. That photo you have could be one of them. And it's from the Bartlett bloodline, and I believe that's Taylor's dad, I don't know, but it's from the Taylor bloodline. So now we get to uh, Taylor and Gunslinger Spawn having a conversation, and Taylor is just kind of like giving Gunslinger Spawn shit. Like, you haven't told me why or what all this crazy stuff was about last night. Gunslinger's like, are you crazy? Your dad and them angels wanted to kill you. That's all you need to know. Most folks who ain't brain dead would have gotten the hell up out of the situation right now. But now you're questioning it? And Taylor's like, bro, that's strange. I know you're a little slow-minded, but I didn't figure for someone who's scared of things. So Gunslinger Spawn chokes him and lifts him up. I ain't scared, you little shit. I'm trying to save your life. You're just too stupid to know the difference. But that's fine by me. If you want to die, then die. But I need to get some things first. Maps, provisions, I don't care if you pack it or I pack it. Taylor's like, geez, well, you know, I guess I'll just go with you, you know? Gunslinger Spawn is disinterested in Taylor's opinions. He's more concerned about finding a way to hunt down every enemy 
from his past that may still be alive. Either Gunslinger Spawn is going to kill him today in the present, or he's going to find a way to go back home in the year 1864 and kill him then. So at the gas station where Taylor works, they grab supplies. Even though Gunslinger Spawn can't read, he knows he needs maps. And I guess he's grabbing some nuts. So Gunslinger Spawn studies the map looking for a few places from his past that still look familiar. And a minute later, that silence is shattered. Beep, ding. He pulls out a gun on Taylor just because he's making microwavable burritos and Taylor offers him some. I guess that's a way to get out of being murdered by gunpoint, but it's kind of a funny scene. But when Gunslinger Spawn obviously accepts the burrito, his method, he takes the symbiote off and he looks like a, from Hispanic descent and we get to see his face his face behind the symbiote. And he puts on a pair of shades and you're like, why is it supposed to be this dark? And it's funny how out of touch Gunslinger Spawn is from 1864 to the 2000 because shades in 1864 didn't exist back in that time. So once they load up the supplies, Taylor directs Gunslinger to a specific part of town. And Taylor tells him, well, yeah, this is the place you point on the map. What's so, what's so significant about it? I buried weapons and crates in the ground. And why did I do that? I did that because I got about two dozen guns and if I know the enemy is coming, I always have to be prepared. Gunslinger Spawn undigs his stuff, gets his guns out, but Taylor gets in this moment like, so you came here to kill my dad. It wasn't that you were just using me, right? And he feels like a piece of crap and he feels bad. And he's like, how am I gonna pay for things? I have no dad, I have no home. All you really came here for was to kill my dad. And here I'm helping you. I, wh what am I doing here? I don't even have any money. So Gunslinger Spawn gives him some gold coins. I don't know how much these are worth today, but this might help. And he's like, oh yeah, this helps. After impressing to Taylor the seriousness of the situation, the two men finalize a game plan and they form a report that Gunslinger tells Taylor, you can call me Javi, that's my real name. So as Gunslinger sends Taylor off with some gold coins, go hide, stay safe, don't go any place that's familiar because that's where they'll be looking for you, okay? Stay hidden in unfamiliar places that you don't know about. Just get the hell out the way. Now, as night falls, Gunslinger Spank falls asleep and takes a nap. The next day, he goes to an isolated place and he knows because this is where he fought his enemies before. So when he's waiting there, a day passes, he see the dust from this car, steam it along, and that happened to disappoint him. So when the henchmen get out, don't move. Gunslinger pulls out his gun too, said I was going to say the same damn thing. Dakota gets out and says, boys, boys. Honestly, do you guys ever turn it off? As a boy, I will answer to the ladies and gentlemen of the council. Honestly, we never turn it off. You get my drift. She circles around Gunslinger Spawn a few times to size him up. She's like, okay, I'll get to the point. We're making plans. And from what I'm told, you could be very useful towards some of those problems. Hmm, is she fine though? Problem is, I've seen plenty of you heroes that didn't live up to their hype. Are you the real deal? And Gunslinger didn't utter a syllable as he holsters his weapon. The silence effect. She's like the strong silent type, are you? I like that. And the henchman trying to attack Gunslinger spawn a swap, boom, blah, blam, kills him, click, puts the gun, go point to Dakota's face. She's like, so you do live up to the hype. Put away that gun, your necro bullets don't work on me. She removes the hat and shows proof that they don't work. I've been shot in the head by others far better than you and they already tried that trick. So put that gun away, boy. And she waves her hand to her prehistoric pets and they grew 10 times their size. You see, if I want, my power is easily transferred to my service. He's all yours, girls. He shoots at dinosaurs. He shoots Jurassic Park. But this T-Rex or whatever the hell this is, is not affecting. These bullets go through him like nothing. He fights what he thinks are demons hundreds of times in the past before. But this time, Gunslinger quickly realized these creatures are different. Make him bleed, then leave him for me, says Dakota. Hey girl, hey. So the dinosaur bites him in the arm. Ow! Gunslinger thinks is we can shoot them in the eyes, stab them in the eyes, they're blind, they can't see. But it turns out it's not enough, and these guys are just wiping the floor with Gunslinger spawn and sort of speak. Badly injured, he's got one hidden trick to play. He lost up a dynamite. Explosion happens, though, even though it has seemed to fail, he's like, what are you guys? He tries to get up and slow down his attacker, but he is sorely out of his league. They go to work on him. Slip! He stabs him, bites him in his hand, stabs him in the face, and this other dinosaur bites him in his head and tosses him around. And then he hears a new sound like a rabid dog straining on its leash. The sound multiplies, and it's the violator, and it becomes a streaming parade of insanity. He's mine now! And that is how this issue will end. I got to say, this is a heck of a read. Gunslinger Spawn was a fun read. It starts off a little slow, but that's okay. You got to do a little foreplay before you preheat that oven and put it in and give it to me like that, you know? But I thought this was a fun read. Link in the description if you wish to add this issue to your comic book collection because you will definitely have a fun time reading this.
Now, my voice sounds a little bit raspy, please forgive me, because you know I have to deliver this content to the boys and to the girls too. And if you like the content we're throwing up, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. It'll help Rated Comics to make more comic book reviews and comic book related content. And it'll help support the channel and Rated Comics to make more content like this. We begin this issue with the clown telling Gunslinger Spawn, get on your feet, boy. I like looking into a man's eyes when I'm talking to him. I'm Why am I talking like Gunslinger Spawn for the clown? I gotta do a different voice personification for him. But you know what? Spawn has collided with this hellish villain dozens of times before. But for Gunslinger, this will be his first encounter and Clown has a proposal for him. You know how many men I've seen walk away from their better interests? But you, Gunslinger, strike me as smarter than that. And what makes you think that, boy? Clown offers Gunslinger Spawn what he wants. And he wants to return, go back to his time in the 1800s. And Clown is like, I can help you with that. And the Dakota's like, wait a minute, he's my target. You wanted me to soften him up? That's what I'm doing. Shut up, girl, you're talking too long. And he chokes her. You don't ever interrupt me again. Get your hands off me, old man. Or what? You'll do to me, Dakota. What will you do? So they have a little short little scaffold. She morphs into a dinosaur and he just tosses her out the way. Dakota's like, if you're gonna take over, then why'd you send me? Because he thought she was ready. And clearly she's not. Some crazy mindset he has, but whatever. Leave me alone, girl. Come talk to me when you're ready to listen. I forget you, clown. You gotta love her spirit, don't you? Now, where were we, gunslinger? That's right. We're talking about taking over the world or something like that. You know what? Just come spit it out, boy. Like you, you you're beating around the bush and I'm starting to lose my patience, clown, says Gunslinger Spawn. But these little clown minions start taking off Gunslinger Spawn's hat and start toying with it. And Gunslinger's like, man, give me my hat back. In due time, he's gonna use the hat as leverage. But let me introduce you to my friend, my little companion, the Violator. He and I go way back, so if you're thinking I don't have ample protection, you'd be wrong. And Gunslinger takes one of the clowns, little clowns, and tosses it at the Violator and says, I said, give him my hat, boy. <laughs> That's funny. Now, Gunslinger knows if he's going to make his move, now is the time with Dakota out the picture. He has assessed the odds. The baby clowns he thinks are just pawns and they don't pose a serious threat. And the clown, he's faced overconfident villains like this type before, and he's better than them. It's the violator that he's concerned with. If he can spill some of the blood, he might deter the rest of them and slow them down so he can make a break. So he gets behind the violator's back and stabs him, stabs him. But that was his plan, but Violet's like, get off of me, slashes him to the ground, punches him in his midsection. You can tell this blood spewing out of his mouth. But in reality, Gunslinger never stood a chance. His beating lasts for several more minutes. Clown's like, enough! I think he's got the point now. Now, on your feet, cowboy, I'm gonna ask you again. Man, I'll get up when I'm ready, fat man. Let's be clear about something, Gunslinger. I'm the alpha around here, so you better stop barking. You're beginning to upset my other dogs. And he's talking about his other minion clowns. I hate to have them unleash them on you. And Gunslinger's like, man, you were a coward hiding behind the clowns and that violator thing. So that's okay, bro. I would do the same if I was afraid. Now, Clown knows he has to carefully weigh his options because knowing Gunslinger is one of the is of immense value to him. He can't stand in subordination, but he won't tolerate being considered inferior. So he whispered a single syllable to these little minions, go, and it triggers the true nature of these hellions, these clowns, that they just gnaw at Gunslinger like, with these sharp, razor sharp teeth. And Gunslinger's like, damn, I was way wrong about these little clowns. They are not just little clowns that are just horrible to look at. They just gnaw at them, gnaw at them, gnaw at them. And a clown is like, Get, leave a little room, bro. Like y'all haven't eat today, but he's unconscious, relax. So they carry on Gunslinger Spawn and they're about to do something with it. Such a pity. These spawns are always think they're better than they are. And this one's too stubborn to know we both crave the exact same thing, which is get off this damn planet. But he will, and his eyes go red. He just needs the right motivation. And a little fresh air in his face. So they hang Gunslinger Spawn, chain him, chain him up, tie him up on his wrist, and they wait for him to go conscious again. As he awakes, Clown is like, look, man, I want to commend you on your how check. I'm trying to get your weapons, but you were clever enough to fuse him with the simia, so you're the only one that can remove the weapons for your hat, just like your bullet belts, but those won't budge either, so I'll give you credit where credit's due, Gunslinger, so you might as well look good while you're hanging there, so he puts his hat back on Gunslinger's head. Don't look surprised, Gunslinger, you're not the only one necro powers, and, and Clown continues to talk, and you know how I got those powers, you know what gave me these powers? Spawn! He thought he figured a way to get rid of me, but guess what? The opposite happened. As long as being shot into the time rip, 
the explosion created everyone else in that direction. So I took a little bit of power off everyone in that time rip. And that's a reference to Spawn issue 301. So Clown ends it with, do you know how much power that is when it's combined? Enough to split myself into two personas. So call me Clown and Violator. I am one and the same. Your chance of survival is to not even be here, not in this time frame. So you need to listen to me, Hellspawn. You are the weakest Hellspawn ever. And you've been and you've acquired your power illegally. So you need me. And so we have to work together, Gunslinger. I can't get what I want without you, and you can't get what you want without me. Because the Ripping time is only going one direction, bringing people here. No one is able to go the other way because the dead zones are locked. Spawn did that. And the only one with the key is Spawn. And your mortal enemy collects you also, Cogs. So ask yourself, Gunslinger, do you think for one second that if Cog gets his hands on Spawn first, he'll offer you the same deal I am? No, he'll cut you out. But I am your friend here. So that's the proposal he gives to Gunslinger. You'll never get back home or see anyone you ever cared about. Spawn can't do it, and Cog or anyone else doesn't give a shit about you or your once gunslinger. I don't care about it either, says Clown, but I'm sure you have a reason to go back home, and I give you the best chance of going back home. Like it or not, we're stuck with each other, so we have to work with one another. He takes out a gun, looks at Gunslinger, he's like, so hell, Spawn, what's it going to be? Surely Sauron wishes you were back. And Gunslinger's like, I can't. Of course you can. Otherwise, you just die slowly on the branch. Clown gives Gunslinger what, what the plan is, what they're supposed to do. And he's still tied up, and these cl little clown minions are like, we're ready to buy that chief. You try to do something stupid. So Clown is like, look, though you prefer you didn't, I like another sharpshooter at my side. Besides, your job is easy. Get close to spawn, and when the time comes, you stab him in the back. What a great, fantastic issue. This questions what Gunslinger's motive is when he was working with Jessica in the Scorch. I don't know if Gunslinger's gonna go through with it, but this is compelling storytelling. This was an awesome issue. And by the way, link in description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection. And in my personal opinion, this was a classic comic. I thought this was a fantastic read. Now we begin this issue with Gunslinger Spawn passed out laying on the ground and we see Clown saying off screen, he's passed out again. It's what happened when humans instead of those born in hell are picked as hell spawns. Now we wait. He puts Gunslinger's hat down and nearly an hour goes by and Gunslinger Spawn coughs and wakes up. <coughs> Dude, that's a horrible freaking cough. Now we see Clown in this panel, happy that Gunslinger Spawn wake, woke up and not died. He needs him for another plan. He needs him for his plan. Issue number four, he needs him to betray Spawn. But for what further reasons, we don't know, but I'm sure hoping we find out in this issue. And man, the panel, the art in this issue is gangster. When he wakes up, he says, give him space. He's going to flop like a hooked fish. His body resets. Especially this one, he's weaker than I thought. So now we see the violator behind two. And remember, Clown and the Violet is split up, so they're now acting as one. But it's devious how he says we need this one alive for a while longer. Gunslinger's recovery takes longer than anticipated. After Clown welcomes him back, he tells him, I hope you're not going to faint. And Gunslinger's like, man, I am just getting warmed up. Such bravado, you're such a riot. But this has dragged on for far too long. I'm still waiting for an answer to my opera, boy. He doesn't say boy. It's just funny when you end boy at the end of a sentence. And Gunslinger's like, what? You want an answer? All right, listen up then. We're never going to be partners. Clown is like, okay, I don't agree. But Gunslinger knows he can't win this battle, but he steals himself anyway for one last assault because he'll be damned if he goes down without fighting. A fight, a clown is more than prepared to take on. And so these two mofos go at it once again after waking up. Gunslinger holds his own against this 2,000 pound enemy, but a harsh reality sets in. When after mustering everything for one last blow, his opponent shrugs it off like a mere slap. Really? He likes to taste the blood. Woo, you think I'm still the same old clown, boy? I know I shouldn't be saying boy at the end, but it just seems so fitting. And he's like, I'm not. And he does like this super power pound to the ground that creates a seismic earthquake. And the ground figures in like a quarter mile before stopping, attesting the clown's new found power. The violet comes to check on his master, ready to join the fray at his bidding. The clown holds him at bay. So Clown is just taking on him. Okay, he approaches a large oak tree which he hung Gunslinger spawn from. Could the Clown have done this before? No, not the old Clown, but the new Clown could pick up a tree and toss it like it's a paper. Gunslinger's like, let's finish this. Slowly, the Clown creeps forward like a tiger locked in on his prey. The two warriors are ready to explode. And all of a sudden, Clown laughs and brings him in like, you know what? 
first spot, you're okay. I'm beginning to like you, boy. Okay, I think that's the last time I'm gonna say boy. And the reason why Clown says it is because he feels that him and Spawn have a lot in common. He goes into neither of us were Hell's first choice. We were never thought of good enough. For me, it started right at the beginning with the first Simi, the one returning to a Hell Spawn costume. He's talking about Spawn, but they failed. They all did. Eventually, Simmons will too, because he doesn't have the capacity to understand his true identity. At the beginning, he freaked out too, like the rest of the Hell Spawns. You should have seen Simmons when he found out he didn't need a heart any longer. And that is a callback from issue number four. I knew then he wasn't going to succeed, but my lord, Malboja didn't want to hear any of it. And if you watch my video about the Violet, he cannot kill a Hellspawn unless he's directly given the order to do so. And out of anger, he turned me into a joke, a clown, before I was sent to Earth to train Simmons. But I recently upgraded myself with a bunch of gods outcasts. I nearly took over Spawn Symbia. With it, I could have unlocked all the dead zones myself. Then Simmons turned it nuclear and without knowing it, created the time rip. I went in, you came out, and that's where we're at. And I finally landed centuries into the future to having to fight myself, my future self to survive. Eventually I tamed it, then found my powers had become somehow enhanced. I used them to influence those around me. When I stumbled across an imprisoned King K, he begged me to free him saying he knew how to return back to earth. I only had one condition. I wanted the soul of every child he ever killed and he gladly gave them to me. And I animated those children's souls into these minions, you see. Oh my gosh, that is horrific that those little minion clowns are souls of dead kids. And your Gunslinger Spawn is shocked about it. Gunslinger Spawn asked him a question. I'm curious, why don't you just take out Simmons yourself? It's not that easy. Simmons has grown into the most powerful Spawn yet. I attack him head on, he'd sense me coming, but he wouldn't suspect you. Another spawn looking for the same thing I want, the key that lets me back to hell. Now they need each other. Clown wants to go back to hell, Gunslinger Spawn wants to go back to 1800s. And he's willing to pay handsomely to get that, but he has to take out Spawn. But the truth is he wants to go back to hell because the treasure he's looking for lies on the other side in hell, Malboja's empty throne. So that's the trade. He goes back to hell, take out Spawn, Gunslinger Spawn has to do that, and in turn, Violator sends him back to 1800s. Think about it, Gunslinger Spawn. I could have killed you when you were passed out. I did it. Ask yourself why. Okay, Gunslinger's like, you got my attention. He picks up the sticks to illustrate his question, but he needs to know something. This is our current time. This is 1864 where I came from. Can you get me back to 1862, not 1864? And Violator's like, okay, you want to go back earlier in time? I think that's possible. And Gunslinger Spawn's like, no. I don't want to know if it's possible. I'm asking you, can you do it? If not, I'm gone from here. Clown turns to see he's not the only one who commands an army. These wolves, these wolves that seem to be commanded by Gunslinger Spawn, encircle Clown, the Minions, and the Violator. Tell your dogs to back off. I don't like threats. Tension builds. Monsters, wolves, minions all begin to salivate. Unfortunately, too many primal instincts at play. And when tension builds, all they know how to do is fight. And with that, all hell breaks loose. The dogs attack the Violator. Violator attacks them. Everyone's going on with this shit show. And with no apparent winners asserting themselves, the battle devolves into a wild scene of savagery. Clown isn't willing to risk any more casualties. Gunslinger Spawn comes to the same conclusion and yells the same order. Stop! We stay here, more wolves will come, says Gunslinger. And Gunslinger Spawn's like, if I join you, clown, what's my job again? For now, there's two things. One, make sure Spawn stays alive. He dies, we're both screwed. And two, the way to do that is to become his friend, or at least give him the belief that that's true. All right, if you do your part, I'll do mine. If I betray Spawn in time for you to go back to hell, I wanna go back to 1862, not 1864. And that's where we end this issue with Gunslinger Spawn, issue number five. I thought it was a fun read. Issue number six is gonna be the end of the first story arc. And as I said, I still dug the book. I had a great time reading it. You will too. Link in description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection. I am loving how Gunslinger series is turning out and the fact that the Violator can now split himself into Clown and, and the Violator, I think that's awesome, man. And it, it's a great and fantastic read. And I had a thorough time. We begin this issue with Gunslinger Spawn and Clown traveling through the Black Abyss. They went from the place that they previous were in the previous issue to Omega Island. Clown tells Gunslinger, relax for a moment while I tend to some logistics, boy. 
The Centurion Army's Greek clown and tell and tell him welcome back. Gunslinger's like, dude, I've been here before. I know. Relax. You may want to step aside, Gunslinger. So as he does, the Violator and two dozen of those tiny creatures, those nasty clowns, come through the portal as well. They're called omens, and they've been trained to know their place. So the omens, like well-trained dogs, they return to their kennels. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, like get over there, boy. And then the Violator, as the guards carefully work to restrain the compliant Violator, it's like a scene in a King Kong movie. Except this monster accepts this intrusion. Just, all right, chain me up. We good now. I'm home. So Klaus like, look, my pets need to be properly leashed when they're not being used. So they walk into this room and Gunstinger's like, dude, is this more of your pets? No, nah, boy. These are just remnants to remind me of the pain I've suffered and where I recently killed a hell spot. And Gunstinger's like, oh, no. And he's like, ah, I'm just kidding. You look at your face. You actually thought I was serious. Ha, ha, ha. Twist his sense of humor this clown has. But he tells him, look, as I said, you're too valuable to be hurt because I need you to do what we talked about in Spawn in the previous issue. And besides, I can't send you back home if you're not healthy. Lost in thought, Gunslinger isn't listening. Instead, he's remembering. Remember why he needs to go back home and we see this sword, this bloody sword with this handle. So Clown's like, look, I had my servants prepare the courtyard for us, so please tell me you're not vegan. I don't know what that means. Excellent. Look at all this not vegan stuff. Of course he's not going to know what vegan or vegetarian means from the 1800s. I don't even think that was a thing back then. So Gunster's like, okay, he's going to probe him some questions. Mind me asking something. I don't understand how this works. Like, how is it that no one knows you're here? It's a big fortress, tons of weapon, a small army. Hell, it's an island and you act like you having a care? And Clown's like, look, it's covered with the cloaking signal. Humans only see and register a small deserted island, not Omega Island. It'll make more sense with a few glasses of wine, boy. And Gunslinger's like, no thanks. Get that bullshit out the way. What a whiskey and I want some big bottles. And Clown's like, all right. I should have realized the man of your distinction would know exactly what he wants, and that he does. And that sword from earlier, an A is carved into it as Gunslinger is slowly starting to regain his memory. So they drink to whiskey, a toast to the future, toast to the past, they cheers, as the sunset of Clown continues to tell Gunslinger with tales from his centuries past, boasting of his many exploits. For his part, Gunslinger just sits there and mostly listens as they keep topping their glasses. And Gunslinger asks Clown, tell me again how all that dead zone stuff works? It's darn interesting. Clown has had enough of his feel like, no, no more. I mean, I'm, I'm still adjusting to my body. I can't handle no more liquor. Oh, come on, come on. That needs to be celebrated. Now, I insist you lift your glass. Don't let your new partner drink alone. So here's to your genius and to all your... Yeah, I like what you're doing. You're stroking his ego to get more out of you. And Gunslinger finally remembers from his past, Amy. And I imagine that's who he needs to get back to or who he wants to get back to from his past. Clown tells him this is how the dead zone works. Once Spawn is convinced to unlock the dead zones, I finally get my rightful place upon Hell's throne. And with it, the powers that should have always been mine. Well, doesn't that mean Spawn has all the power if he's the only one that can open it? For now, yes. But when we spring our trap on him and I take over, it'll be glorious. Nothing can stop me then. Oh unless I kill you first. And the clown turns sober real fast and real good. I'm this kitten, boy. You reckon you took me serious for a moment? Ha! If I had a heart, I would have died of a heart attack. I knew I was gonna like you, boy. So one of the servants comes in with dessert, and I love this line right here. Hey, you know what? Before you cut that cake, we don't consummate in front of peasants. You're right. Get out of here. Leave us be. So to us, the party continues, and mo whiskey is poured. Long into the night, Clown is just like, dude, my friend, have I convinced you? He's slurring his words. Well, I want you to know, says Gunslinger, I must admit it's tempting, but now that you told me how I can get home, I don't give a shit what you want. He stabs his hand, puts his head on the table, like, F you, son. My house. Tell your mama to send me a plate. Actually, no, you can't send me a plate. You already, had a, you already ate all the food. Don't give me that look. I learned long ago not to trust nobody, especially your kind. You think I'm a fool, clown? The moment I help you open the gates to hell, I mean, I'm dead. I'm a dead man. I know you'll never share your powers, and I'm not going to get used like one of your damn pets. I've seen what liars do, and I will not watch it again. I'm taking that as referencing to the past and what happened to Amy. And he impales his head. That knife won't kill you, clown, but you're going to have one hell of a headache. So before you pass out, the time rip. How's it work? Does it go in a straight line or can I jump around? It doesn't matter. He swipes a knife out of his hand, pushes Gunslinger back. You're going to be dead before you ever get close to it. And like a linebacker on the franchise tag on the last year of his contract, and he don't want to be franchise tag. He want that guaranteed money. He tackles him into the ground. 
Gunslinger knows he can't beat the clown in a one on one straight up battle. Master, you're hurt? Let us take him out, says one of the Centurion servants. This is my fight! Put your guns back away! Let me demonstrate what I'm capable of! He picks up Gunslinger, and this is definitely reminding me of ba Bane when he broke Batman's back. And that he does! Breaks it in half in a more brutal manner. Cartilage and muscle rip away from his bones. They were right. He is the weakest hell spawn as he holds Gunslinger weakly and dangling in front of him. Guess that depends who you ask what you consider weak to mean. And Clown is surprised. He looks back at the body and it's one of his servants. And Gunslinger is like, is it the body or the mind? Seems like yours is failing. How you reckon on killing me when you can't tell the difference between your guards and me? A little magic and some booze. That's all it took to put you out your game? Does hell know how pathetic you become? Gunslinger reaches for his guns. The guards shoot at him, but he takes out the guards first, real quick, and Gunslinger continues to go to Clown. I'm sure you could kill me if you wanted to, boy, but not in your condition, not as some low-life drunk. You're right, says Clown. Yes, the children have to take care of it then. He grins and he calls on these little omens, and they burst into the room, gnawing at Gunslinger's spine. <laughs> I, I, that's, I, that's how I think they bite them. Just like rapid, sharp, razor teeth bites are just annoying. <laughs> Feast, my pets. Feed on them, my children. Or should I say my animals? And Gunster's like, yeah, that's right. That's your mistake because they back off the spawn. You think these souls still have some innocence? They don't. You're right. They are animals. Like the wolves in issue number five, I can, I can control these animals. Now, can the time rip jump years? It can't do anything if you're in one in charge of it, and you'll never be in charge of it, Gunslinger says Clown. Oh, that's all right. Then I'll make sure you're not in charge of it either. But thank you for telling me who is. So the Omens are now under Gunslinger's command, and they all come attacking Clown like a prime rib at a Las Vegas buffet. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so... <laughs> And Gunslinger's like, look, I'll make sure Simmons knows you've returned when I see him. And the next time you think about coming in my direction, boy, remind yourself of something. Wild animals and whatever monsters you throw my way, they obey me, not you. And we see Clown just getting ripped to shreds with these little omens. Gunslinger understands he's not the strongest Hellspawn, but with proper timing and a bit of guile, the power he does possess just might be enough. So before leaving the chambers, he, he goes into the chamber where they're holding Violator. He quickly takes out every guard in the room and he tells the Violator, look, I don't care about you because you got the same stink on you as that damn clown. And since this was our first meeting and all, I'll leave you with the little gift. Hope you show it to many of my enemies as you can. And he carves Amy on his leg as he exits the scene. And that's how we end this issue of Gunslinger Spawn issue number six. I am definitely loving this series. I love how the first story arc of Gunslinger Spawn ended. This is the end of the first story arc. Issue number seven is the start of a new story arc. And I will be doing a video compilation of one through six to cover the first full story arc for anyone that's just new to this channel or jumping into it. Or you can just check out the playlist in this video but I thought this is gangster I absolutely love it and also link in description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection we begin this new story arc where previously in gunslinger number six after evening of hospitality at clown secret base and then turns violent quickly and in a gangster kind of way Gunslinger is back on the road searching from those from his past and we see that he meets a lady along the way that's trying to teach him how to catch a hitch and you know, they have the history together, they're flirting with one another, and you can tell they probably skinny dipped or two before. Maybe not, but she ends it with, you know, I gotta go, I think you're good looking. I'm headed to the river to clean up, but you're more than welcome to come join me on skinny dipping if you like to. He's gotta pass on her offer because there's a destination he needs to get to. He catches a hitch with the truck driver, but the drive is hours later and he drops him off in the middle of nowhere. And the driver is like, I feel kind of bad leaving you right here, but this is where you wanna go. He's like, yeah. Thanks for the hospitality, my friend, but I got my reasons. And those reasons include returning to a place where he recently tangled with a female called Dakota and where the clown transformed himself. So we're going back to the roots over here. He come to this area because it was a place he used to know well when he was a boy. These woods also served him well when he needed a refuge from his abusive father's fist. It's also where he left a few of his belongings, like his rifles, his ride, and those wolves too. You can call them his friends. 
So he greets the wolves, good to see you, but I can't stay, I got a few things to take care of. And then a voice from the distance, like, well, who's gonna take care of your wolves then? The stranger's voice sounds like a man that smokes three packs of cigarettes a day, but more unnerving is that he somehow didn't make a noise getting this close to Gunslinger. Can I help you with something, says Gunslinger Spawn? And he just grins as if nothing. A sinister kind of grin, like, you don't know what you can help me with, boy. But Gunslinger's like, all right, I'm on my way then. And this brother's like, nah, man, your pets don't want you to go. That's what you're trying to tell me? Gunslinger don't say nothing. He just mounts his bike and gets ready to leave. And he's like, I said, your pets want you to stay. And he throws a boulder at his bike and his brother transforms into a, a man wolf. 1,200 pounds of monstrosity with fearlessness that drives the wolves now obedient to him. For tonight, we feast, says the man wolf. They're bloodless, trained on Gunslinger. And he already threw a massive bolt at his bike, but Gunslinger defends himself. This creature isn't what's foremost in his mind. And this brother just lunges at him and bites him in the arm. Instead, there's an anger that started to dwell inside of Gunslinger, one driven by the same damn question he's been asking himself since he arrived in the century. How? He keeps repeating that same question. How is it that these enemies are able to track him down? The Dark Angels, Dakota, Clown. It's almost like they got a GPS up his ass and they know exactly where his ass is gonna be. So they fight and they go at it. And Kagi is like, okay, you wanna play? Let's play, let's do this. And he channels his inner strength to defeat the beast, to fight the beast. And his rage is what unleashes against his eight foot man wolf. And with every slash of his Bowie knife, he keeps asking himself, how, how the F are you fighting me? How are they doing this? And he slashes him in his head. But as in any closely fought battle, there's always a time when one needs to worry about what's staring at them in the face. Besides his man wolf right here. Gunslinger has been around animals his whole life. He knows when they're injured, bleeding, or cornered, they'll defend themselves on sheer instincts with every means necessary to survive. And as this beast's eyes turn brighter, so do Gunslinger spawns. Guess what? Until the symbol on his chest begins to burn with flames so white hot, it tears away at his flesh. And I don't know what it is, it's some kind of mystical power, but both warriors for a brief moment attempt to catch their breath. And Man Wolf was like, they want you to walk away from this. They say they need you alive. So remember tonight because next time I'll be in charge and I won't walk away until you're dead. This will be the last time Conover lets his prey escape. And with that, he disappears into like a majestic display of matches that blankets the night sky, leaving in his wake a giant burnt symbol once he's seen before, a mark seared in the gunslinger spawn's memory long ago. It's a message from those he was hunting in the 19th century. And that's referencing Gunslinger Spawn issue number one. But you can also check out that issue in the playlist or at the first story arc of Gunslinger Spawn if you haven't caught up. With that being said, we continue on with the review. Gunslinger goes up digging it because it was for exactly for times like this that he bored weapons in a handful of spots. Because soon he may be in need of each and every one of them. He thought he wanted to find a way back to his own period, but that symbol, the one scorched in the grass, signifies that the worst of his enemies may also also have been pulled through the time rip that brought him here. If that's true, he'll need to do two things. One, he needs to prepare himself in any way possible with as much firepower as he can. And two, he needs to heal himself because that burning sensation that he got earlier from whatever the heck that was, he's obviously more than just a man wolf. He goes himself into an ice pondy water as he heals himself. As he attempts to ease away that pain, he knows trying to go at it alone won't get him what he wants, so he needs help. So he goes to a bar, my kind of guy, I need help in life, I'm going to a roadhouse bar, baby, woo! And guess who's there? Jessica Priest, gazing, locked in on the mirror behind the bartender's too because she's eyeing a target. Who? We don't know, guys try to talk to her, screw off. I've been there before, what guy hasn't approached a girl at the bar and gets told to screw off? It happened to me, come on now. So he approaches Jessica Priest, hey darling, you need company? And she's like, oh no, I'm not interested. Not yet, but you will be. He introduces himself and tells her, we met before under different circumstances, under different costumes, you gave me a motorcycle. And that's referencing Spawn issue number 313. And she's like, Oh, you? How'd you find me? Ne never mind. We, we ain't got time for that. This isn't a good time. And he's like, look, I'm just looking for a few things. And she's like, I'm working right now. You're about to blow my cover. So leave. Javier is like, okay, under one condition I'll leave. 
tell me where I can find Spawn, the one you call Simmons. And she's like, man, that'll take time. And like I said, I don't have time for that. I'm undercover. So their chatter is interrupted by this brother right here that tries to, you know, be Captain Save with Jessica Priest. And like, hey, it looks like this man is bothering you. You need, you need help? No, I'm good. Then I'll be over at that table behind me, but you know, I would love to dance with you later. Perhaps we can grab a dance later, you know? And Javi's like, you deaf or just stupid, boy? She says she's good. And this hulking man stops dead in his tracks. And she's just embarrassed. Like, why are you doing this? Not now. I'm trying to be undercover. And you putting my business out there like that. Well, girl, you're in the roadhouse with black leather outfit. How else you not gonna get your business out like that? But jokes aside, this brother goes up to Javier like, you looking for trouble, mister? Be more than happy to oblige you with that. Depends, mofo. Though, I only like to fight men. You think you can find one for me? <laughs> I love this kind of pettiness right there. And she tries to break it up, and Javi's like, I'm just gonna blow smoke in his face, because that's what I do. And we already know, unless this guy is like a demon or something underneath, Gunsling is gonna take him out really quick. Who is this guy? And Jessica's like, oh, he's just an ex-boyfriend, had one too many drinks, that's all. We were just leaving. So I ain't gonna get that dance? I'm afraid not. That's what she tells the guy. Then run away, you little freaking coward, and hide behind her skirt. Don't want to see you around or your whore girlfriend again. And that just sets Gunslinger off and stops him in his track. He's like, what did you call her? And I hate to do this, but that is literally where this issue ends. Literally. That's the end of this issue. Honestly, yes, I, I dug it. I love this new threat, whoever's hunting Gunslinger spawn. Definitely kind of a tease of a cliffhanger. I mean, but then again, perhaps this Vulcan guy might be a demon. Look at that sinister shadowy panel when he gets all pissed that he's not going to get his dance. You know what I mean? It was definitely a fun read. But hey, you know, we just got to go along for the ride and just get tagged along with it. Hi, my name is Nathan, and today we're going to do a comic book review of Gunslinger Spawn, issue number eight, brought to you by Rated Comics. Let's get to it. Before we begin the issue, we're going to do a little summary of the previous issue. After the battle with the mysterious werewolf known as Carnivore, Gunslinger realizes that not only are some of his enemies from the past are still alive, but they know he is here in the present. So here, in the location far away, him and Jessica Priest are laying on the ground, reminiscing what happened in the previous issue. Why did you do that, says Jessica? Well, you heard what he called you. I didn't like the way he was calling you. And Jessica's like, I know, but at the same time, I was trying to fuse the situation. But instead, you crapped all over my hard work i was undercover you know how long i spent on that target well months i guess i don't know i don't get it just a caprice is like i don't think you do that's the problem and he's like man this place is all new to me why can't we just keep things simple you know i just want to keep it simple and plus i was protecting your honor she spawns like, i can take care of myself and i don't need you taking care of my honor maybe there little lady you're just being sensitive says she <laughs> gunslinger you know and don't you dare patronize me says jessica priest i don't know what that means I'm just gonna put on these glasses, girl. What you think of my looks? You know? So we go into this flashback of what happened previously at the bar. I love a bar fight. Actually, I, from a distance, I do. But <laughs> don't judge me for that internet. It's just fun. From a distance, I mean. So Gunslinger goes into this monologue, I ain't never back down from a fight, especially when it involves some of the bastards I've been hunting. So I got a couple questions buzzing in my brain, like, why were they there in the first place? And second, when are you bringing me to spawn? Gunslinger wants Jessica to bring him to spawn, as we know from previous issues, and we will be reminded of that why later. Because every day Gunslinger spends in his era, things get more complicated, and he likes his things simple. And she's like, yeah, simple fits your personality as we go back into the present, and take those damn clouds. Glasses off, Gunslinger. You look ridiculous. You had no right killing my target. Girl, he killed himself. So we go back to the flashback at the bar. And besides, you don't know the history be behind that man. And this man is Wilbur. He's with this chick. He sees Gunslinger and his servant or his assistant about to go down. He's like, gentlemen, please. Ain't no reason to fight, right? And then she spawn tries to, you know, defuse the situation. Says, hey, forgive my friend Wilbur. He can be a bit high strung. My sincere apologies. I apologize if he's insulted you and your fine ass lady. <laughs> she didn't say that. I just thought I added in there. That's the caffeine kicking in. That's the caffeine kicking in, you know what I mean? We'll leave, let you enjoy the evening. Sorry, that guy's name is not Wilbur. Wilbur is a big guy who's the assistant. So he tells Wilbur to pull the car around and he's like, right away, Mr. Silverton. And, and Gunster's like, Silverton, you wouldn't be the same one that lived in Sioux City a while back, would you? But the way he says it, he's not supposed to know that. And Silverton's like, mm, 
you ain't supposed to know that. But his look says it all, even without saying it. And Gunslinger's like, look, no need to answer. I see it on your face, a surprise look, how you survive all those decades. Curious though, exactly. How many native women and children you, did you slaughter back then? Ooh, Harvey, please, why are you going there? He's looking for a fight, but the past is the past. Silverton's like, mm, too bad what happened to Amy. She was a fine looking woman. Pisses him off, pulls out the gun, Puts it at his head, Javier's reaction ignites tension on both sides. Some serve Silverton, others revile him. Turning that moment into an epic bar bra. And back in the present, Jessica Priest like, Amy, something something changed in you when you said that name, Amy. Who is she? I don't want to talk about it. Oh, really, says Jessica Priest. My whole mission goes to shit, and you're, get, and you're getting all coy now? Come on, that's not fair. Who is she? Javi gets pissed as his eyes go green. He stands up. He's like, I don't want to talk about it. Like a hissing cobra, Gunslinger tension gets ready to spring. Now he asks, where the hell is Spawn? And Jessica knows she needs to tread carefully. Look, man, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to pry on this, but I assure you, you're not the only one dealing with personal pain. It's been tough on all of us. Don't touch me, Jessica. Get away from me. Just trying to help. Like at the bar, why did you ask me to leave? I needed something. Wasn't going to get it with you there. That's why I asked you to leave. So we go back to the bar, and so it's just like, if you're going to shoot me, shoot me. You were always reckless. You knew him, Harvey, says Jessica Priest. Get out of here, girl, and take everyone here with you. And don't think about changing. Meaning, go, don't go into your she spot form. That'll blow your cover. Okay, people, all of you need to leave now. So they all evacuate. And Silver is like, boy, you know that gun can't hurt me. I'm not like the others. I know. And I don't care, says Javi. Clint cocks the barrel, blasts him off. He turns into a two-faced evil deviant. And Javi's just like, I just want to confirm if he was still a deviant. Now what you want to do. Before they decide... Worldborn means to protect his boss, and protect him he does. Gunslinger pistol whips him, but this brother's like, hell to the knob. Punches him, throws him across the bar, and Javier's like, man, this is taking too long. I want some rumble, you know? So he loads his pistol with necro bullets, bullets that can stop a herd of elephants and deviants. He blasts it off, and this is funny. Like, even though you don't see the full detail of it, you can tell he clearly blew Wilbur out of, just out of his own shoes, literally. As body parts ooze down the wall, Gunslinger learns they're not all deviants, and some are just actually humans, like the, like the brother Wilbur. Wreck this is stupid. It's amazing you lasted as long, says Silverton. I'm gonna make sure I remedy that and he turns into whatever the freak that is and like and they go after it He coils them up strangles them up and that is it But you know what gunslinger is about to cut through this pain in both ways Literally, that's all he could do to untangle himself takes off his hat grabs the knife and just slashes away and keeps slashing until you cut your enemy down to size Do your worst says Silverton go on because there's a hunter like me ready to take my place I don't care about them says gunslinger you're the one in front of me right now and what gunslinger does next catches silverton off guard he drops the knives and so like what you gonna go at it raw now you're gonna go at bare hands like where's your weapon you need weapons on me but he lunges at him full speed and that's what gunslinger exactly wanted him to do catch him off guard lunges at a full speed i'm tired of being hunted why is it so easy to track me his grip tightens like a vice as he compresses his head. Then he continues his dialogue. Clown, Dakota, the angels, how'd they find me? Because I save all of you the freaking effort. And he squeezes hard as this guy screams in pain. By hunting you down first and Winston, my message will be clear to all of you. And he goes tired. He goes tired. That's right. I know who your master is. And he can't even talk his pain right now. He can't even talk what he wants to know. Gunstick is just pissed. Everyone's tracking me. And I don't like that shit. So he squeals harder. He squeezes harder. And pop. Like one of those cherry tomato pops, you know? <laughs> Just pops his head, explosion, screams, mixed with the noise of destruction, filter out a little longer than silence. Gunslinger exits the bar and he tells Jessica it's time to go. And Jessica's like, you're right, I hear the sirens too, but I got to tell you, I don't understand what you did or why. As they go back into the present and Gunslinger Spawn tells her, because something happened to me and I'm going to kill everyone who had taken a part of that. Then I'm going to find a way back home and stop what actually happened. And that's why he needs Spawn, because Spawn can help with that. And Jessica's like, okay, I'll take you to him, but you need to do me a favor. Yeah, what is that? And she tells him, I'm putting a group, a team together, one that'll fight this damn war we're in, and one that'll keep Simmons alive because we all need him for something. Join me until you figure out your way home, and I'll make sure you get to spend plenty of time with Spawn. And that's where we end this issue of Gunslinger Spawn, issue number eight. Gangster issue, the back and forth flashbacks, I love it. 
in Batman Killing Time, the back and forth flashbacks was way too overused in my opinion, but I was hoping there was a bigger payoff with that. In this case, the story flowed and I'm all for it. I'm sick with it. I, I just dug the freaking book. As always, I'm always looking forward to the next issue of Gunslinger Spawn and that request right there that Jessica, that Jessica Priest did to Gunslinger Spawn is a time to the Scorch. Hey, we did all the reviews on the Scorch and we're going to continue to do all the reviews for the Scorch. Awesome issue. Awesome read. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Link Now, before we get into this issue, we're just going to do a quick summary breakdown. Jessica Priest, aka She Spawn, attempts to recruit Javier, known as Gunslinger Spawn, to join her fight. But getting close to Spawn and figuring out a way to get home is all he cares about. That is until he realizes that the one of his enemies from the past is standing right in front of him in the present day. So we get a flashback of Javi in New Mexico, 1849, 1200 miles from their destination. California's northern reaches where the gold rush had settlers and miners all swarming hoping to make their fortune. In years to come, they will be dubbed as the 49ers. We get Javier, his wife, and his kid, and they're all on this hunt for this gold rush. But to reach that destination would take months of grueling conditions, as well as a constant need for resupplies. Brennan Lino, close to the Mexican border, could provide that. We see his wife and his daughter and his girl and his daughter, you know, carrying the groceries. Javier goes to this, you know, horsemith. They say, hey, shine my horse's shoes, take your time, I can use a bit of rest, all while trying to get rest to continue on with their gold rush. But his peace is short-lived. A man burges into the room. Where can he hide? He's asking for his hide. But his blood is soaked in his shirt. Get away from me, boy, says the man. I need an empty stall and a six shirt. You got one? No, but I... The door slams open like a storm, nearly blowing it from the hinges. And it's this mysterious figure with the hat looking sinister and ready for some action. You know what bothers me the most about you, Billy Joe? It's your attitude. I told you not to run, didn't I? And he hunts him down. But you wouldn't listen to me now, would you? Now I got no choice but to slit your throat. And he does that. And Gunslinger Spawn, or Javier, before he was even Gunslinger Spawn, he's like, um, um, you know, like, he's just, he just witnesses action right in front of his very eyes. Brother turns around like, what are you doing here, mister? What are you going to do about it? He going to tell the sheriff what you saw? That wouldn't be wise. But that man was unarmed. So are you, says the figure. And Javi knows this is not good. Amy, get back. It's not safe out here. One throw from it, and that's all it took to punch of a heart of Javi. That man throws a knife in the back punctures his heart, goes down for the count, wake up Javi, wake up as his lady cries and BAM! Shoots her point blank. He wakes up in some dive hotel, it was all a dream. She spawns like, yo man, you said her name again, Jessica Cruz, you said her name again, you said Amy. And Javi's like, dude, pack your things, we need to go. It's two in the morning, where the freak are we gonna go? I said pack up. As they pack up and leave, Jessica Priest like, yo, man, let me ask you something, Javi. You're so hyped up wanting to find Simmons. Why didn't you ask him what you want to ask him the last time you guys were together? This is a reference of Spawn's Universe issue number one, or the one shot, which you can feel free to check out that review. Link, I'll put the link in the description or the YouTube link in the description. And Javi's like, I didn't know he was valuable then, but now I do. So the rest of the ride is silent. Though Jessica questions whether the new team she hopes to form will ever materialize, and that's a call to the Scorch, which I do review all the Scorch issues. But it's really cool how all this is coming together. But for now, she'll play along as they go to have Javi's weapon stash. Jessica tells her we'll need to travel through the shadows. Do you know how to do that? And Javi's like, I have limitations, but I've used the dark before. Close your eyes and I'll show you. So she closes her eyes for two seconds. And within those two seconds, Javier stands behind her now. Javi somehow moved from down the hole to another position while transforming into his full gunslinger persona. Never blink first when you're in a fight with me, honey buns. Well, he didn't say that. I just thought it was like appropriate to say or something he would say. Plenty of enemies found out the hard way. So how do you change yourself? And she's like, okay, I'll show you. And it's like, oh God. <laughs> yeah, I know what she's doing is just to distract him. And Gunslinger gazes at her beautiful body. Now, darling, close your eyes. And he does that. And when those two seconds pass, more than enough time for Jessica Priest to shift costumes and wedge her razor sharp blade to his throat and slam him to the ground like, I could do the same thing and I could have killed you just then and now. Why? Because I showed you my breastlessness? That's all it takes for you men? Pathetic. Yeah, that's all it takes is some breastlessness. And it hurt and it worked. She spawns like, Javi, we're at war. Do you get that? You make one misstep and you're a dead man. And I'm not worried about you. It's the others that'll pay for your stupidity. Lucky for you, I'm a loner. Don't need to worry about that, says Gunslinger. Hmm. 
Well, we'll see. And she spawns like, and one more thing. I know you desperately want to get back to your own timeline, but if it were me, when you meet Simmons, I'll stay on his good side. Compliment his leadership and military brain. Hell, tell him how powerful he is. He likes that kind of stuff. He's like, well, sorry, that ain't my style. Fine, suit yourself, says she spun, and the shadow swallows them both. Meanwhile, in New York, at the end of the day, Mr. Almonte says goodbye to his secretary. After several long meetings, this executive looks forward to simply relaxing and watching a little television. But as the elevator jerks to a sudden stop, he knows his evening might not go as planned. He tries making a call to the security, but his cell phone won't work and everything goes black. No one's coming to your rescue, Phil, says Spawn, as he takes him to the site, undisclosed location, and starts getting some, you know, some torturous interrogation going on here. Phil, stop your theatrics. I'm not in the mood. What I'm more interested in is knowing why, when I asked about who's running your operation, where those files are, all your associates keep throwing each other under the bus. And no one knows what the hell's going on. But when I visited this guy, he somehow knew nothing, even though I was told he knew everything, says Spawn, and says, you, Mr. Almonte, you are the one that should be the most threatening. So I have one question, who is freaking lying? Everyone's freaking lying, but everyone knows, like a shark swimming in blood tainted war, these men that Spawn has gathered know their next breath may be their last if they're untruthful. She spawned a gunslinger like, hey, we hate to crash your party. And Spawn's like, you shouldn't be here. Not my choice, says she spawned, but the cowboy wanted to come with me to meet you. I knew you couldn't be trusted, said gunslinger. Trusted, says she spawned. He's here because you screwed up, not to mention you opened that time hole. This guy, you brought him here. He wants to know how you can send him back to his time because you opened up that time hole, Spawn. Spawn's like, man, I'm busy. Can't you notice? Now, the lady asked you a question, Simmons, says gunslinger. Now, answer her. And if you're busy, too busy, I could take care of that. These hombres, they special. And Spawn's like, hmm, and you blowing smoke in my face too? They have a boss that I'm trying to find. Trying to find? Interesting you're at war, you don't know who you're fighting. Watch this. And Gunstick goes into action. Hey, he asks one of the guys, hey fellas, you important to your boss? Yeah, kind of. And he just blasts him, blasts him, blasts him, ends them all off. And he's spawning. She spawns like, what the freak are you doing? Are you insane? I was hunting their boss, not them. And Gunster's like, I did you a favor because the moment their boss finds out they're dead, he'll come looking for you. That's how you flush out a weasel. Spawn's like, bro, I am military. You don't tell me how to do my job. And Gunster's like, go ahead. Beat me instead of your enemies. That's a real smart move on you, Simmons. For years, Al Simmons wanted nothing to do with heaven or hell. Now their distraction is all he obsesses over. Not for himself, but for billions of humans ignorant of the dangerous sin on Earth's doorstep. Stop this! Both of you, says she, Spawn. This is the how we'll win. They want us at each other's throats. You know, Spawn, you're military. We have to band together on this. We have to work together instead of working individually. That's how we're stronger together. You know that. And it takes everything he has to not say something's back. And Spawn's like, not if you guys like Yosemite Sam part, part of it. I love the Louie Toon reference. But that'll accomplish nothing. And whether he likes it or not, Javier needs Spawn on his side. At least until he gets what he wants from him. Leaving him with the only one sickening option. And he has to kiss ass. Then teach us, I need to learn. I can't write, I can't read, but I can fight. I can fight real good. And hey, you could be a great leader because of your power, your military skills. We all could use him. We need you. Apparently, he's heeding to Jessica Priest's advice. Though Javier does not believe a damn word he says. And that's where we end this issue. I love this story, how it ties into the to the scorch. And I love how the meeting is very believable, very plausible. And I just love the rawness of Gunslinger Spawn. Like, oh, you want their boss? I'm just going to blast them off. They'll come to you. That's how you flush them out. Just absolutely love this issue. Link in description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection. I just gotta explain myself a little bit. I know it's been a week since I uploaded any comic book content, and also I'm a week late to uploading this review too, because usually I like to upload spawn reviews, Gunslinger Spawn, King Spawn, any spawn reviews first as a new comic book releases on Wednesday. But we were doing San Diego Comic Con, we were hosting, we were vendors there last week, so I was exhausted, needed to rest up. It was an amazing experience, but with all that being said, now let's get back into the content. Gunslinger Spawn is there just watching Jessica Priest and Spawn just duking it out in argument. He's been enduring their conversation for over 20 minutes. And it's been painful listening to Spawn and she Spawn trying to convert to each other to their perception on how to best move their toward in their war. Though both may have sound strategies, Gunslinger is disinterested in all of it. What he cares most about is trying to cozy up to Spawn, a man who he has zero respect for for the sole purpose of using him so he can return back home to 1859. Nothing else matters beyond that, and he'll do anything necessary for him to fulfill it. Now they keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, all this argument. 
and he's had enough and gunslinger niggas take a walk. And Spawn's like, yo, hey, and she spawns like, yeah, where are you going? And Gunslinger is you know, you gotta enjoy the comedic timing with Gunslinger because he does add some humor to it. He tells y'all sound like Cal's birth. I need to give my ears a rest. Hold up, hang on, says Spawn. You got the wrong impression. None of this is your fault. You're here because of me. I get that. But if you're ever going to have a chance on getting back home, you need to be alive when that when that happens, you know? So Spawn's like, so until I figure out a way to do that. You need to be safe. And Gunslinger's like, yo, man, I can handle myself. Don't worry about me, bro. And Spawn's like, I'm sure you can, but let's help each other out. So Gunslinger's proposes, well, how do you reckon we do that? And Spawn proposes by teaching each other what we know. We can meet up later, go over everything later. But you ever take out one of my informants again, I'll make sure you never get back home. And that's referencing the last issue. And as Spawn leaves, Gunslinger's like, yo, man, that man is moody than the trap possum, you know? And she Spawn looking good. And Dangerous tells Gunslinger, well, I told him you're a loner, so he's probably figure out the best way to get rid of you so he's probably thinking i should pretend to like you to get rid of you and gus is like yo quite the opposite i don't like him but i freaking need him to get back home but it's just kind of funny how this is playing out so later on we transition to from gunslinger and she spun over here into the base of terry and gunsling or terry and spawn and terry is talking about this database overload and ionic energy fields with necro mapping sequencing and some of the tracking targets disappearing randomly and all these hell spawns making appearances and gunslinger doesn't understand a damn word he's saying and terry's like don't worry when i run my energy flows not all of them are emitting necro waves so all these hell spawns are surfacing and Gunslinger's like, what the heck is all this? I see these screens, new hell spawns surfing up. Is that ninja spawn right there looking badass? And then Terry's like, well, some of them are not all hell spawns. Some of them are hostiles. That word hostile, it's a word Gunslinger knows all too well. Tens of thousands of lives were senselessly lost because of the degrading definition given to that word. But what's far more confusing to Gunslinger is how calm these two men appear given that they're surrounded and who knows how many of, them, how many of those enemies are traitors. So Terry tells Gunslinger, your experience could really help us i think so he sees all these hell spawns and you guys are just cool about it they don't notice gunslinger's hand slowly sliding down his holster duck it's an ambush and he starts shooting at the computer screens <laughs> because at this point from 1859 to modern times where you're seeing live action on the computer screens gunslinger can't tell what's real what's not so back in near mexico the far mexican border we see these guys talking about the plans already in motion and that plan is to get gunslinger spawn into their grasp but obviously they don't grasp the magnitude of what's of opening up the dead zones will do so they have to call upon ratcliffe ratcliffe is in this office and they tell him hey we got a private match to discuss this is a matter of our boss you gotta go so ratcliffe leaves and it's, it's this feeble man inside this wheelchair and this guy tells him though i'm curious about you ever retire i want to see if i could delay that that decision for you as a certain matter came up that you might be interested in and ratcliffe's like what what, ma what matter? It has to do with the man who wiped out your family. Gunslinger? Yeah, he's here and he's here now. You're lying. And he gets up and he starts morphing into this. I want to say this like Conan the Barbarian Hellspawn looking thing. And his anger grows. Radcliffe morphs into this broken man into something much more menacing. I think this is Conan the Barbarian Hellspawn fashion. It looks really good. Tell me where he is, he says. So back in the lab, they're all going back and forth. It's not real. Why'd you shoot it? Well, that doesn't sound reassuring. Girls are like, what? So they're all just computer screens? Yeah, for God's sake, you're compromising this operation. So she spots us, your actions keep compromising us, making us targets to those tracking hell spawns. Then get him off your track. You know how, says Gunslinger? No, says, the, says she spun. Well, grab a piece of heaven. I know where that is. Well, how do you suppose we get that? Well, one of us uses your shadow powers and takes me there. How about you, Spawn? You up for a big fella? And Spawn's like, okay, I'll bite. Spawn somewhat admires the fact that Gunslinger doesn't seem intimidated by anything or anyone. So Spawn begins to tightly wrap the cowboy in his cape, squeezing from beneath him. And as it, within a heartbeat, they morph. Is this the place that's perfect? Instantly, Spawn feels though his powers are draining from him. What are you doing, says Spawn? Don't you feel it? Your powers are gone. All of them, just like mine, thought we'd veer off our path just for a spell away from everyone. And as we're here, come on, you know it's a dad zone. We're mortals inside here, so you're just Simmons and I'm just Javier. And it's time to find out who the better man is. But it's going to be a fair fight as Gunslinger drops his holster, drops his guns. His weapons are all to the ground. He's grown tired of everyone calling him weak. 
the hell spawn with the fewest powers. So he vowed if he ever were to have his powers taken away from him or he became normal again, he always he always be able to defend himself. He studied cowboys, the Spaniards, and the tribal warriors, and he mastered all those skills again and again and again, watching closely how they each killed one another, how they fought, and the weapons they used. They combined everything he learned until he mastered all of it, honing those skills in a dozen ways to maim, murder, or mutilate his enemies, and him and Spawn go at it for the next three or four pages, and this is the insane art panel right here. Even though Spawn is CIA trained, it's kind of diff it's different for a CIA trained specialist to go up against someone who can adapt fighting styles in the, in the Switch. But the thing that drives him most isn't that he can't defend himself, that's the easy part. It's that in spite of learning all those skills, he wasn't able to defend his sister Amy. So Spawn's like, whew, all right, I'm taking it back. I'm kind of surprised, I'm impressed. I could say the same, says Gunslinger. So they both have each other's respect and they continue sizing each other up and they're like, okay, we're good, right? So a simple gesture with the handshake seals the deal, though neither knows each other has a hidden agenda of their own, and if faking a friendship gets them both what they want, then they'll both gladly play that part. And Mark's like, man, I hope those two aren't kick kick kicking heaven's ass right now. Well, they're kicking some ass, that's for sure. So Spawn's like, I'll join the group. Jessica doesn't need to know that yet, but there's something I still need from her. And Gunslinger's like, yo, do what you need to do. With each step from the dead zone, their doormat symbiotes reanimate once more. But I got my own business to attend to, says Gunslinger. There's some folks from my past, evil folks still alive. I'm fixing to pay them a visit. But I said we need to get a little piece of heaven first, so how about we do that? Just point me in the right direction, says Spawn. And they do that, and seconds later, they go to where Redeemer's at. Hey, Goldie, we need to talk, says Gunslinger. <laughs> It's a Redeemer's piss. Yes, Redeemer knows both these men and they know him, though his explanation of how doesn't quite make sense. The rest of the conversation centers around common enemies and how creating an alliance might benefit each of them. They also conclude Jessica can't know they already made their commitments that a new team has just been born. So, they're all in agreement, they're all in alignment, and this is the beginning of the Scorch. And you can catch up with that with the Scorch. Issue number one, I'll put the card up above, as well as link in description, as well as I did do a first story arc review of the Scorch, which is all the Hellspawns teaming up for all, for an evil that's bigger than any individual Hellspawn can handle. And that is the end of this review. Personally, I love this issue. I enjoyed the heck out of reading it. Is it one of the better, one of the best Gunslinger spawns? No, it's not. But at the same time, it can it gets the story moving not as much in advance that i like to see it but at the same time i dug it and i wonder if this is a key issue because i don't know who this guy is because is this a, is this the first appearance of ratcliffe this guy does look like conan the barbarian mixed with hell form hell spawn form you know but link in the description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection Previous issue, the enemy from Gunslinger Spawn Pass emerges, and it's this brother with the white hair, this Game of Thrones, Conan the Barbarian, Hell Spawn looking mofo, and he has one of Sp uh, Gunslinger Spawn's angels, well not his angel, but an angel that Gunslinger Spawn fought in the previous issues with her wings ripped out from her back. And this guy is like, hey, give me some information what you remember about Gunslinger Spawn. How did you find him? Tell me. I can't tell you. I'm not going to tell you, says the angel, because you slaughtered my family. Well, they had it coming. They didn't talk. But you have the opportunity to talk, and your wings being ripped out is a death sentence. So, talk to me, talk to your boy, and then I'll spare you. So he taunts her some more like, you're insanity. You feel a growing, don't you? You can survive with a single wing, can you? Say it, help me, she says. And he's like, that's what I wanted to hear. We get this overview shot of how menacing this guy is. And he's like, okay, come down. You suffered enough. Tell me what you remember. How did you find Gunslinger Spawn? Oh, you know, you've been traumatized. It's expected because she can't remember too much. So he gives her a drink. Whatever this drink is, we call it memory juice. Whatever this memory juice is, I want to taste of it. Not that I want to remember. I just want me some drink. But anyways, jokes aside, it takes a few hours, but the injured warrior recalls just enough to be useful. Her recollection was fragmented, but the stranger, whatever he call, whatever we call this brother, he has what he came here for. And he goes in and he releases her, her misery. And she's like, what are you doing? Putting you out of your pain. But you said you helped me. I am. I'm giving you a quick death. And he snaps her neck. And this brother is just nothing to be messed with. So meanwhile, in this panel, Gunslinger Spawn grows impatient, waiting. But finally, Jessica Priest is there. She spawned. And she's like, we could have met somewhere else. Why did you have to meet in the middle of nowhere? This is too damn far. But he's like, yo, I don't like people too much. Okay, well, obviously, that's clear. But here, catch. Some of the gold coins you fetched from your past got you a lot of cash. You're gonna need this, all right? I had to BS the banks because they don't like a lot of big transactions, but that money 
that money in the bag that's your new best friend you can't get anything you need without it so protect it with your life all right and i know you're not too big on long goodbyes so take this when it flashes red it means i need you for another scorch mission i'm like okay so this is taking place after the scorch i like how these stories are parallel with scorched and king spawn and king spawn i like that you know so he's like all right peace you know but you know what he will he will use that device that jessica priest gave him when it's time for another mission or when she contacts him and it beeps he'll 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 respond you know he's cool like that but when it does beep he'll travel through the shadows to get to where he needs to be but for now he prefers the open roads as he navigates to newcastle wyoming now what's in newcastle wyoming you may ask well it's taylor of course remember taylor from the previous issue and if you're just watching this video for the first time you're more than welcome to watch the first story arc of gunslinger spawn issues one through six i'll put the card up top and also the, the link in description and if you're new to this channel i appreciate you for watching and thank you for watching so taylor's from the previous story arc and he gets approached by this girl hey you want to play with my dog because he is uninterested in this party he doesn't want no part in this party just let me play my video game you want to play with my dog and he wisely bites his tongue and he walks away. He's been a lost soul since coming to Newcastle, feeling out of place and disconnected from everything. School, friends, family, and it's only getting worse. And you see these kids picking on like, hey, moron, you too cool to mess with the Dakota kids? Well, go, go play with your loser nobody. Friends, you loser. So he go walks away and back around a corner of a boarded up building, he finds some respite. And all of a sudden there's gunslinger spawn. You need a light? I'm here. Jesus, man, you're here. Jesus had nothing to do with it, boy. <laughs> you know I gotta put a little country mix with gunslinger spawn, right? Relax, it's just me and you. But I was wondering, I'm needing some help, and the best person I could think of was you. So you wanna come on a trail with me? Yeah, I'll be your Robin to your Batman. And keep in mind, how Taylor forgets a gunslinger spawns from the 1800s. He knows nothing of those modern references. He's like, oh yeah, I forgot. You don't read on the reference, so where are we headed? But for now, the answer for the time being is nowhere in particular. So Gunslinger asked Taylor, I need your help to find certain people, just like your dad, whose family had a big part of hurting my family. Why, says Taylor, so you can kill him? Yep, yeah, that's the plan. Why? Because they took someone from me. My sister, her name was Amy most of my life. She was the only family I had, the only one I could talk to. They did something to her and they made us both do something you can't even imagine. Those memories wash over Gunslinger once more and he gets up, he's like, yo, Taylor, I'm just gonna take a walk, all right? So Taylor peeks, it peeks into the back, but he's like, man, we're rich, look at all this cash. But before he can celebrate that reality, that reality thought lasts for a short, brief, fleeting moment before reality comes crashing down literally by this way of this new villain who knocks Taylor back, crashes into the tree, knocks him 20 foot back, and this villain, imposing brutal villains like Taylor, that's your name, isn't it? You think you're just gonna crawl away? Is that your plan? Don't be absurd. Stand up and fight like your life depends on it because the truth is, it does. And unfortunately, Taylor isn't able to get up to his feet. His left leg has been injured from the crashing fork. You hear me? Says the villain, stand up and fight. Get up. They said you're a gunslinger. I mean, it's not clear how this brother finds it, but whatever the angel tells him, hey, that's all he needed to know. Taylor tries speaking, but his throat is being crushed. Is that true? Is that true? You know where gunslinger's at? Foop! Gunslinger throws a knife in his hand. And careful now, that knife could have went through his hand into Taylor's face. But for the sake of comic book world, it didn't. Touch that boy again, you lose the other use of your hand too. Taylor, I need you to get behind me now! Gunslinger takes a step towards his enemy like a bear protecting its cubs. Taylor is off limits. Limping severely, Taylor does exactly what's told. Tell me, big man, why should not kill you where you stand? You, says the villain. You killed my family. What the fuck is his name right now? But we'll find out shortly. If I'm dead, I sure they deserved it. Javi, shoot him. Don't just stand there, shoot him. Get to the bike, Taylor. Turn it on if I'm not standing in three minutes. Go as far away as you can. As the hulking villain approaches Gunslinger, he stands resolute. And it's like, dude, this guy is big, and I don't know how many pounds of muscle he has on him, but you know what? This ain't Gunslinger spawns first rodeo. Three minutes, you got that? Gunslinger lands a blow to his midsection with all of his might. Now, his first blow is meant to disable his foe instantly, but the, vil but the villain barely flinches. That's never happened before. And he backhand him like a ragdoll. As he pulls his blade out, Javier curses himself because you should have put that knife in this guy's head when he had the chance because his enemy is smart enough to block his own face. Now, like, he ain't gonna have that chance, son. My body's all you can get, if you can get it. And what other options does Gunslinger Spawn has? He throws a knife to his face, pierces his hand, but 
But you know, it don't matter. So he wallops him in the face and Gus was like, whoa, man, this guy's got some chunkers. This guy's got some blow. This is like Hail Spawn Tyson knocking me out. Woo! Knocks him out again. Fight back, damn you, says Taylor. Ha ha ha! Says the villain. Because the villain knows he's got his ass where he wants him. On the plate, his laughter is soon drowned by all his primal house. You coward! Said the wolves again? Are they gonna eat me alive the way they did to my family? And Gus responds like, hmm. I remember that night. You're an offspring. You're a winter stone. I am, says the villain. Guess we both got pulled into that time shift. That means you know where the others are. The ones I'm looking for, says Gunslinger. All the enemies in his past. Now it happens simultaneously that the wolves launch themselves at Winterstone while Gunslinger, for some odd reason, continues shooting at the ground. He's shooting at the ground to create a huge cloud of dust, momentarily blinding the two opponents. But at some point in the battle and confusion, the villains had enough. He disperses the air with one thunderous clap, going Hulk status. Clap the hands, get the dust out the way. Gunslinger Spawn was looking for an advantage and he got none at that fact. And whatever Gunslinger was trying to do, it didn't work. So so this brother puts his hand on Gunslinger's throat, rips his head off, decapitates him, and that's where we end this issue. Damn, that is a brutal ass ending, and that is a plot twist that I did not see coming. If I recall with Spawn, a Hell Spawn's true death, it has to be a, I believe it has to be decapitation ahead by something magical or something of equal value, and I don't know. But how is our boy gonna recover from this now? Is this issue worth the purchase, even though I spoiled most of it for you guys, if not all of it? Yes, man, support the art, support the industry. This is really a gangster issue to add to your comic book collection. Also wanted to mention, I do have a personal YouTube channel, Nathan Hatchie, your comic, which is an educational uh, YouTube channel that I do as well. Link in description under my solo .to. In the previous issue of Gunslinger Spawn, Gunslinger Spawn comes face to face with an enemy tied to his past. Radcliffe Winterstone, an encounter that doesn't go quite as planned. And as he decapitates Gunslinger Spawn's head, as we saw in the previous issue, he taunts that he did this and he flexes about it. Look, look how weak he really was. And I hate that it took so long to finally prove it as he weighs Gunslinger Spawn's head across Taylor. So what do you think, boy? This is what happens to those who mess with my family and what happens to those like you that help men like him. It's over for both of you. And he takes a stick, stakes it to the ground, and puts Gunslinger Spawn's head on top of it. Plops it there. Game of Thrones style. Desperate, Taylor makes one last attempt for survival. Though, he knew his odds were nearly zero. You thought you could run away, boy? As Radcliffe puts his red magic rope around him, ties him up, hog style, brings him over, and Taylor, all he can do is call out Javier's name. That's not my name. I'm a Winterstone. Do you know what that means, boy? Well, he didn't really call him boy, but you know what? This is only the point where you can only imagine what this brother's gonna do to Taylor right now. But, Gunslinger Spawn goes up from behind him, tells him to leave that boy alone, and shanks him in his eye. And it's Gunslinger's name, the improbable it seems, Javier's alive, driven almost to the point of insane level of retribution. He restricts the flow of air into his, into Winterstone's lungs. He doesn't want this brother breathing. And to make sure that this villain's brain doesn't know that's happening to him, he creates another point of extreme pain, destroying an eye socket. This is to confuse and distract the brain from knowing what it should and what it should not react to. I mean, damn, savage Gunslinger Spawn. What the hell happened? Oh, I, I, I know what happened. I'm gonna keep going on because Gunslinger Spawn, it is established in Gunslinger Spawn issue number six that he does have the power of deception. So Gunslinger Spawn shoots Taylor a look it's a meaning of get the hell out of here but Taylor doesn't get far as Winterstone blasts him away you devil he calls Gunslinger Spawn toss him to the side you're dead you're dead how is this possible take a look says Gunslinger and he, and he looks at the head on the stake and it's a wolf's head most believe Gunslinger Spawn's powers are weak but the piece that's always forgotten is his power of deception but for that power to work it needs something real for its effect this is between us, says Gunslinger. That animal had nothing to do with our war, nor does that boy. This is between our families. Go ahead, waste your magic bullets as this Radcliffe Winterstone puts his power shit up and doesn't want Gunslinger Spawn using his bullets. And Gunslinger Spawn's like, okay, I don't think I'll waste my bullets. So the fight's at a stalemate for right now. Elsewhere, the sworn enemy of a thousands of heaven's foes surveys a recent battlefield. And this took place in Gunslinger Spawn in the last issue when Radcliffe went savage on all these angels trying to find the whereabouts of, 
a gunslinger spawn. And this guy goes by the name of Savitar. He's accustomed to arriving to the battlefield late, but he's seeing that his warriors are shredded and he doesn't like the cruelty of their demise, which makes him all the more mad. But the anger he knows serves no one. Instead, he swears an oath to himself. These brave souls will be avenged. He takes a feather from the wings off their back, puts it like in his cape or whatnot as a way to remember, a reminder of what he's fighting for and what must be done. And this brother's gonna do it. Like so many others, he been hunting for Gunslinger, but as he leaves the blood spilled landscape, he knows someone else got here first. Soon, he will make his existence known to both Gunslinger and those that got in the way. So he's out for Gunslinger's ass and whoever did this mess. But we'll see what happens about that. What's the matter, cowboy, says Winterstone. Why not murder me right now? Or don't you know how to do that unless women and children are involved? Provoking Gunslinger. The few you let live told me about you. How sick, how evil you became. Children, you kill children. Those were my brothers. No, they weren't, says Gunslinger. They were dogs like the rest of your family. Wow, says Winter. So you actually believe that? Don't you? You've got the you have you have no idea how insane you are. Holding his power shield after taking a brutal beating is beginning to wear on Winterstone. Gunslinger chooses to bide his time wisely. Is that what they told you, says Gunslinger? That I did it for no good reason. Just wipe them up for the heck of it? Well, they lied to you. You ain't gonna believe me, but here's the thing, says Gunslinger's fine. See, they attacked me the first time around. Had no clue why, so yeah, we fought, but I didn't kill him. Not that day. It's one of the great regrets of my life. And he goes into the montage of the story of the history of all that happened with Ratcliffe's family. You know why they attacked me? They wanted my buffalo skins, the two I had. I thought I scared them off. Instead, they went after the family of natives that sold them to me. They took all that they had, every last skin, but that wasn't good enough for them. So they had to slaughter those poor folks too. A few of them even had a hand letter in corrupting my little sister. So that wasn't enough, they had to corrupt my sister Amy, says Gunslinger. So I did go after them when I found out all that they did. You damn right it did. That's when I killed them. Starting with your father, boom! Your brothers, boom! Your uncle, boom! All that I could find, I let the relatives of those names deal with the rest of the clan. Guess they felt since their women and children weren't given no respect, they decided to even the score. But right now, none of that matters. What does matter is some of the Winterstones got involved in what happened to my Amy. So I'm betting you also know the names of a few others who were involved. I like those names, says Gunslinger. The weak adrenaline now fuels Winterstone's next power surge. With anger pumping through him, he can't believe this man. The one responsible for the murder of his family said that it was justified that somehow Gunslinger spawns a freaking hero. Get the hell out of here. For seeming like an eternity, our cowboy Gunslinger spawn takes on the full brunt of the energy. And so when it finally stops, so his enemy can catch his breath. Gunslinger drops to his knees. He too needs a moment to recover. So does Winterstone. As he raises his head, ready to continue once more, he's caught off guard. He looks up and he sees Taylor taking the branch and smacking it across Winterstone's back. And it doesn't even phase the brother. And Gunslinger feels bad and curses himself. Why won't Taylor just listen? Leave him alone, go! But what's wrong with him? But as the Gunslinger spawns summons one of the wolves to attack and bite the wrist of Radcliffe, his presence complicates everything, meaning Taylor's presence, putting all of them at risk. Javier, Gunslinger spawn, needs to suffocate his enemy. Now, he reaches inside, channeling his inner beast. As he begins to howl, his loyal pet feeds off his master's emotions. Like some shark thrown into a frenzy from fresh blood in the water, Gunslinger thrashes about in blind rage hammering his appointment over and over and over and over again. Okay, you get my point. It almost becomes an excessive use of force, but he won't put his enemy out of misery. Not yet anyway, just not yet, but that's gonna happen because he learned a Winterstone son grew up and began his own reign of terror. A son who thrived in slaughtering as many natives as he could. Babies, children, women, they were all just savages to him. Javi, stop this, says Taylor. You don't got to do this, it's gone too far. And but Javier, Gus like, don't want to hear none of that. The only clue attribute to the mass murdering was his long white mane. So no, Gunslinger won't stop. In the name of Amy, not until he eliminates everyone involved in the decimation over 400 innocent lives. Javi's bullets can't kill this monster, but he's going to keep shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting away. Delivering pain is their purpose. I want those names, says Gunslinger. It takes time, but eventually he gets it. 
Six more names added to a list of those he already knew about. That's 11 in total. Let's go, says Gunslinger. Gunslinger responded to Taylor. Get you someplace safe. Then what, says Taylor? Then I have things to do. And that's where we end this issue as Gunslinger spawn and Taylor ride off or walk off into whatever the next journey gonna happen next. <laughs> I absolutely love this issue. At first, I thought I was getting played as a reader when a Gunslinger Spawn appeared magically uh, after Winterstone ripped his head off. But it does make sense because it does establish that Gunslinger Spawn does have the power of deception as he did with Clown in issue number six. You can check out the review on Gunslinger Spawn issue number six or Gunslinger Spawn the Brutal uh, First Story Arc issues number one through six. I'll put the link in the description in the card up top. It does establish that. I absolutely love this issue personally. This is probably one of my most favorite issues of Gunslinger Spawn to read. Then again, maybe not the most, but one of the most favorite to read. I absolutely loved it. Link in the description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection. With all that being said, Previously in Gunslinger Spawn, just a quick summary, after a particularly brutal battle with the villainous Winterstone, Gunslinger gets his information he was looking for. Now his quest continues. We begin this panel with Taylor buying some knickknacks from Gmart or whatnot. Taylor is still walking with the limp and he allows himself a small smile of satisfaction. That was because of the bag of cash that Gunslinger Spawn handed him in the previous issue. However, Javier is frustrated and he just stares at the pictures on the menu. He could really use Taylor's help right now. He's hungry. Like Tyree says in Fast and Furious, we hungry. Like I said, we hungry. And he can't read and he wants to order something off the menu. So when Taylor finally gets there, Gunslinger asks him in Javier form, what's this? And Taylor's like, it's a Grand Slam breakfast. Grand Slam breakfast, what's that? You know, like baseball, what's baseball? Keep in mind, Gunslinger spawn came from the 1800s immediately into current time. He's not gonna know what that is. And Taylor's like, not this again. I'm seriously wondering with all this shit that keeps coming your way, how are you planning on doing anything if you can't read? Hey, my boy, I'll just figure it out. So Javier asked him how his back is feeling. He's like, man, like crap, but at least the cash you gave me helped. And that's a reference from the last issue, which you could check that out if you haven't checked that out as well. So Taylor asked him the obvious question, your reading problem, man, how are you gonna address all this? Well, Javier is like, all I need to know are directions. It's why we're in this town. Just point me where we got to go. And Taylor's like, what are you doing? Are you gonna go after one of those guys that Winterstone mentioned? When will you be back? And you see that dark, sinister face like, oh, I am, and I'll be back when I'm done. Later on, as the night falls down, we see this guy on a cell phone with a suit talking on the phone, talking about, hey, be, just be patient. We don't know who he's talking about or who he's talking to, but that's not the important part. We don't care about any of that. What we care about is what happens when the railroad or the train starts passing by and there's something wrong. The tires are flat and guess what? That's Gunslinger Spawn doing his thing. So as his assistant, his bodyguard, we should call him that, reaches for the phone to call for assistance, for roadside assistance, Gunslinger's like, uh-uh, bro, you looking for this? Ooh, this guy doesn't know who Gunslinger Gunslinger is at that moment, so he's like, I'll give you my wallet and the keys. <laughs> your car can't move. Why would I want your keys for? And you know who I am? So stop pretending. He tries drawing his gun so the driver must not know, or maybe knows, but we're gonna go with not know who Gunslinger is, and he shoots him in the chest. <laughs> Who else knows I'm here, says Gunslinger. Go to hell, says the brother. And he was like, yo, man, I was hoping you say that. Decks him in the face. Decks him again in the face. Kicks him on the back. Pushes his head to the glass. And the and the employer sticks his head out like, what's going on? And you in that kind of face, come on now. Like, you got to have a much more shocked face. You heard a gunshot earlier. And, and your bodyguard's head being smashed in the face. Stay where you are and don't move. You seem important. <laughs> and he does seem important. Important enough to get his ass whipped. But anyways, so after he tells her to stay in the car, Gunslinger's like, yo, man, stay right there. I know you're important because I'm going to take care of your boy here first. And this guy gets strapped on the road, on the railroad. And Gunslinger proceeds to ask him, how many of you came through the hole? I got no beef with you, Gunslinger. Mm, problem is, says Gunslinger, I got beef with you and your people. So tell me, especially your old boss Sanchez. I can't. I can't. Kill me. He'll kill me. He won't kill you because I'm going to kill you first. Now, where is he? Heard he's around these parts, you deaf boy. And as the train approaches and he just keeps staying in silence, Gunslinger just, you know, cool like a cucumber, just 
sits around waits for his answer so he tells him last chance boy and the train just runs over him and splats him meanwhile in the cabin in the woods that's a good name for a movie actually it is a movie but <laughs> we're gonna go back to the content he asks when his dinner is gonna be ready and his wife tells him chicken just needs about another 20 minutes you said that about 20 minutes ago get your act together i bust my ass all day out here doing out in these streets you got me out in these streets doing my job i can't you do yours get that chicken ready oh i'm doing my best baby shut up and get me a bear you boy hungry like i said we hungry <laughs> anyways so there's a loud thump on the top of the roof and he wonders what the crisis is at and she tells him okay i guess it came from the roof and he gets a shotgun like it better not be them damn owls again and obviously this is not the first occurrence but we all know this ain't that kind of typical occurrence they know so she tells him to be careful seconds later an explosion comes in the form of a human cannibal tonight's chicken's gonna be uneaten <laughs> get on your feet fat man i'm through with you not by a long shot <laughs> Yo, Gunslinger, I mean, you my boy and all, but that's kind of fucked up. Like, I love chicken. Let the boy finish his chicken first. Let him have his last meal before you give him his ass whooping. And then she cocks the shotgun back and points it at Gunslinger's head. I came for your husband, Nate, not you. Drop your gun and tell me why you're here, says the girl. Because your husband hurts people. Lots of them. Mm, don't spill your lies to me, Gunslinger. I know you're kind. My husband only hurts those that deserve it. Those that got the evil in their heart. Men, that ain't God fear. Now drop your damn gun. And Gunslinger's like, okay, I wouldn't do what you're thinking of because your barrel's cricket. It won't shoot straight. And she's like, what do, you, what do you mean? Like, it throws her off for a quick second. And that quick second is all Gunslinger needs to make sure that barrel is cricket for real. Now, you know what these are, says Gunslinger, as he puts these necklaces out. These are necklaces from the corpse of just a small number of those that your husband has murdered. And he's going to pay for those sins tonight. Question is, you want to join them? And she's like, no, nah, we cool. Do your thing. And he's like, okay, I didn't think so. So Gunslinger doesn't say another word for the rest of the night. Now, you may be wondering, how did this brother find out who this guy is? If you keep in mind, the guy in the back of the Suburban didn't feel like getting shredded by the train. So that bald brother, <laughs> the employer, spilled the beans to Gunslinger. And Gunslinger knows exactly what he's going to do <laughs> to torture him. And also, Javier also thinks what they did to him when he was just becoming a man. So he ties him up, straps him to the horse. You're crazy. Let me go. But before they depart, Gunslinger wants to leave Sanchez with a reminder of who he is. And once Gunslinger spawned Dizza, he slaps the horse's ass and there they go. Javier will find the horse about five hours from now. That's when Sanchez's real punishment will begin. And then we go into a flashback of what happened back in the 1800s. The year was 1860 and Javier has been waiting far too long to exact that punishment. Officially, the Civil War had not begun, but tensions had already started to divide friends and families across the Mideast. That animosity slowly poured itself west with devastating results, and we see young Javier, before Gunslinger spawn form, getting dragged through that same punishment he's exacted on Sanchez. He doesn't remember being dragged across the rocks, dirt, and water because, mercifully, he passed out hours ago. It's only because of a fatigued horse that got thirsty stop and <laughs> stop this ordeal but two things forever changed that day for javier the first was letting the evil poison of hate enter his heart it's been there ever since he gets a piece of shard or piece of rock a sharp rock and cuts himself loose and as he escapes and cuts himself loose from his feet we see the devastating result on his face the second was finally understanding that he was di somehow different and as he walks and looks for some water just to try to survive that enlightenment would change his destiny permanently which is why he needed to survive and he needs to survive he's trying his best to stay up on his feet he's walking stumbling it was also something he remembered that he realized animals were somehow drawn to him he collapsed to the ground this and that horse goes up to him all because he tried doing the decent thing now a half a day earlier what happened as we end this flashback within a fl under the flashback so a half a day earlier the gang had been drinking far too long and you know their manners were shifting into something more you know drunk saloon style you know so these men they're drunk and they're you know they thirsty they hungry they start acting rowdy and so they get this woman and they obviously have some plans that they want to do to her and this guy's like yo man that's my wife and it's my gun now what i'm getting sheriff jones says the guy I and mean, i don't know this is this man protecting his wife but when you see a gun in your face you, you got to do the wise thing and back down and live a little day right didn't you hear sheriff's out of town says the guy smoking a cigar she slaps him unhand me whoa nelly think she gets i think she left a mark and this guy's like mm, 
I can call a doctor if you need, boss. Nah, he's mad. You can't, you can't get slapped like that and let your boys just talk about it like that. So he slaps her back. You need to control your wife. And he decks the husband in his chin. They leave her husband bleeding in the dirt as they walk away, taking the victim, taking the girl. Now, the lady asked to be let go. And that's a voice coming out off screen. And we see this brother go down after a knife to his forehead. So they turn around curiously, wondering who the heck is this guy? And it's Javier. Where I came from, you never make a lady ass twice. Not if you don't want to get yourself hurt. And that's where we end this issue of Gunslinger Spawn, issue number 13. A little flashback of Javier. Now, I know they touched on this in Spawn's universe. I did do a review on that. I'll put the card up top and link in description as well. Now, I absolutely love this issue. Now, we went from learning who Gunslinger is to what the mission is we know that he's on the hunt for those that did his sister amy wrong and now that he's on a hunt mixed with some brutal savagery you cannot go wrong with this man i still end up in the air with what my favorite spawn issue is king spawn or gunslinger spawn to me those are splitting hairs but this issue with how good this issue is in my personal opinion oh man it has a little bit of an edge right now but i'm not going to be quick to jump to conclusions at this point but link in description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection support the art support the industry gunslinger spawn continues to work his way down the list of names that did him wrong and there's 11 names total and he's knocking them out he now approaches one of the men that set him on the path to transforming him into gunslinger spawn and we begin this issue with javier before he was known as javier he was 20 years old and it's a continuation from the previous issue where he upholds this lady's honor from these three men who are about to you know do some things to her that we just <laughs> let's just say it didn't have the best intentions and he throws his knife at this guy and he turned out he's wearing a steel padding underneath and he's looking at javier like how do i pay you back boy you don't and javier had a different name back there but he never could stand bullies so he decks this guy in the face and blood comes out and he tells this man to get this woman away from here i'm gonna deal with them though he doesn't quite have a plan on how to do that and at some point though he fights like hell but he just simply outnumbered and this beating becomes brutal because it's three against one and the boss tells the guy put him on the horse and let's go who do you think he is boss i don't know i don't care just some nobody and they mean to get far away from prying eyes as they go deep into the desert eat up boy you need your strength so they feed gunslinger or they feed hive here before he turns into gunslinger and a few days later he's feeling better so the boss tells him nice to see you on your feet boy but that won't last get me a horse puts him on the horse straps him on shoots the gun to Aaron cruelty is something that the boss has always enjoyed and one of his henchmen is like you wants to follow him don't even bother kid I've trained that horse to come back when it gets good and hungry shouldn't be more than a couple days by then all she'll be pulling is a pair of feet with no body left and he awaits patiently to see what happens so 10 hours later of this dragging and Javier is brutally and mortally wounded he asks the horse for help try as he might the pain coursing through his body makes him pass out again hours days he doesn't know how long it's been as odd noises awake him the horse is panicking but yet doesn't run away the wolves ignore the horse their focus is on javier before he turns into javier based on the narration yet the closer they get to him the more calm they seem to become for the longest time they all just want to sit and wait and when he tries to get away the animals follow him like pets with their master they're looking at this bird like i don't care if you wounded like that and look at that art right there i don't care if you look like that you are still alpha to us Javier can't grasp what's going on or happening or why. As his mind races, the random convulsions his body has felt for years, and he's been dealing with this for years, and these convulsions explode with a hundred times the intensity, making it feel like his body's being ripped apart. That's because it literally is. Black inky tendrils mesh with the ravaged flesh, the symbiote forms. He sensed something was happening to his body, even as a child, that dark thought has haunted him for years. Yet on this day, that darkness did defeat defeat him instead it became his armor his deliverance to a new destiny i love this crow doing the final touch dropping that gunslinger hat on gunslinger spawn like a cherry on a spawn sunday i don't know if i'm hungry or more anxious for more spawn comics but anyway and that deliverance has never left him 160 years later somewhere in eastern montana in the church this lady is talking to pastor collins she tells him that she should have been a better wife and she should have tried harder but i couldn't change him and she's going through some grieving moments of her abusive husband and pastor tells you know you did your best 
but Jimmy had a temper Satan would be jealous of. He was always that way. No matter how many times you tried to reach out or we tried to reach out, your suffering is partly my fault and I wish to God he never put his hands on you. But you need to be a mother of your children, an example. Show them your strength. I will help them any way I can. Thank you, Pastor Khan, as she leaves. But for the rest of his day, the pastor prepares for his next sermon. And as he's reading through the script, she opens a drawer and we see a gun with cash in that drawer. That's not something you typically see with pastors. In this panel, Gunslicker Spawn tells his horse, easy girl, let me lighten your load. And this is starting back from the previous issue of Gunslicker Spawn, which we did do the review on. If you haven't watched it, check it out. Gunslicker Spawn issue number 13. I'll put the card up top and link in description. Gunslicker Spawn has caught up to the animal he sent running with the cargo. Though he's more concerned about the cargo than it was the dragon. Wake up, Sanchez. I know you ain't dead. You're too stubborn for that. Now wake up. He rolls that man over. You don't look so good. In other words, Payback's a bitch, right? But Sanchez doesn't wake up yet, not at least. And Gunslinger will need to be patient just a bit longer. Much later, the moment Sanchez moves, Javier is ready. Rise and shine, fat man, put that one on your face. Wake up, boy. We got some more torture in the beginning. You and I are gonna have ourselves a nice little chat. It takes a few minutes for Sanchez to orient himself, but when he does, it's like a freaking typhoon has hit the abandoned shed. I'm sure I'm, don't ask why I did the Chewbacca noise. I don't know. It's just a Star Wars moment, okay? But this boy that wakes up with a vengeance is catching our Gunslinger Spawn off guard, but only for a second or two, Gunslinger Spawn lets out a couple caps. <laughs> While his enemy resorts to any means necessary, the horse is an option. And he clubs Gunslinger Spawn again and again and again with that horse. <laughs> Get up, cowboy. <laughs> And Gunslinger Spawn is pissed as he gets him. He broke her neck. You broke her neck and decks him in the face. Gunslinger's connection, perhaps his only real kinship to the animals, throws him into a blind rage. Sanchez will never touch another animal again. I wasn't here for you, boy. I wanted your boss, not you. They don't care if you die. And he rips his arms out from where they stand. I'm getting tired of climbing up this ladder. It takes longer than he wanted, but eventually, he gets his answer. He beats it out of Sanchez. He gets another name on the list. And that ass is his because he's hungry. <laughs> Gunslinger doesn't kill Sanchez. There's no need because a signal has been sent to wolves. And the wolves will soon shred and then devour the rest of his body. And he leaves him right there. Back in eastern Montana, this girl gets scared from who was talking to Pastor Collins earlier. She flees the office, tears streaming down her face while the pastor sits casually and relaxed. Then... The clack of boots echoes in his chambers. At first, no one is there. Then, from the shadows, a present pours forth. One which Pastor Collins has crossed paths with before. But that was over a century and a half ago. She found out, then she says, Gunslinger, how you corrupt everything. Was it her, or did she find out what you do to children? So, says the pastor, the rumors have been true. You're back. That's a pity. He takes out his gun and unloads on Gunslinger Spawn. <laughs> And he ducks and dodges and gets the hell out the bullet's way. I know what you did to my sister, says Gunslinger. I don't think you actually do. Wrong! <laughs> no, not even a chance for doubt, because there is no doubt. Why was there no doubt? Because Pastor Collins was one of the names on his hit list. Sanchez gave him up. There are 11 names on it. Gunslinger wants to make sure the other 10 understand his message. He sets about laying out his plan, shoving one of his necro bullets in the wounded for good measure, wanting to make sure there'll be no doubt in any of their minds who is now hunting them down as he leaves Pastor Collins like this. And that's where we end this issue of Gunslinger Spawn, issue number 14. Just buy the damn book. Look, just buy it. I mean, link in description if you wish to buy it from Rated Comics or Amazon. Just buy the book. This is a gangster read. I mean, <laughs> I ain't got nothing else to say. I have not read a terrible or a bad issue of Gunslinger Spawn. I don't got nothing else to say about it. I love this revenge tale, one by one, knocking them out. And this is definitely brutal. With now, Gunslinger continues to pick names off his hit list, one by one, slowly making his way towards eliminating all that have done him wrong. Now, in this panel, every day in the news, we hear or read of some horrible act of violence as these robbers break into this house with the couple sleeping and shoot them point blank. And tonight is no different. 
It's a jewelry robbery. They rob the jewelry. Once the men are sure they've not been followed, they allow themselves a bit of celebration. They go to the bar, and like all true psychopaths, they could care less about the harm they've done. And they have a chat about what's the best fantasy, whether it be Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings trilogy, or Avatar, all over beer. <laughs> okay, boys being boys, I guess. And the two men continue their wide-ranging debates, including everything from music to sports to video games and women. Oh, oh. <laughs> Jokes aside, until it's time to call it a night. It's been a long day, and the robber needs to cleanse himself before grabbing any sleep before they divvy up the robbery. You know, the jewels. And this robber's kind of proud of what he accomplished, though he doesn't give much thought of that besides being a thief. He's also a cold-blooded killer, as this hand protrudes from his mirror and smashes his head into the mirror. And I don't know who this guy is, but he comes out the mirror, goes to his nightstand, and finds the bullet that was shoved in the forehead of the dead pastor. And that was in the last issue. And keep in mind, at the end of this video, you can go onto the Gunslinger Spawn playlist, and you can watch that Gunslinger Spawn issue number 14 or any of the other issues of Gunslinger Spawn, because here on Rated Comics, you cover all Gunslinger Spawn, Scorch King Spawn, as well as Spawn as well. Or we're working on getting all of Spawn. But anyways, once this mysterious figure finds that bullet, he explodes from the thief's house and he exits in style like the Flash. Now in this panel right here we see Taylor playing video games and Javier knocks on his door and he tells Taylor to open up and this chain that's in between the door is not going to keep me out so let me in. So inside Javier quickly morphs into the gunslinger persona and Taylor's like why do you need to do that the curtains are closed it's not like you have to hide anything. And Javier is like, well, the more I use Javier's body, the faster it rots. And I believe that was covered in Spawn issue 308 or 309, but it was definitely covered in one of those issues. So Taylor is like, whoa, whoa, so what are you saying? You're not Javier? What the hell is this? This is news to me. All this is hitting Taylor fast, being a mere mortal or a mere human. And then he puts his head down. He's like, forget it. It doesn't matter. I should be used to everything by now, but I'm just having a tough time with all this. And on top of that, keep in mind that Gunslinger Spawn issue one and two, Taylor figures out that his dad was working with angels and he can't get a grasp of all that and he still doesn't have all the answers he needs. So Gunslinger Spawn's like, look, man, I get it. I went through a bunch of stuff when I was about your age. I lost most everything too, including my family. So I was wondering if you'll be willing to come on the road with me. And Taylor's like, why me? And Gunslinger Spawn's like, because you're smart than me way smarter than me and besides I can't do what I need to do without you your world's too strange for me and given that gunslinger spawn came through the time rip so Taylor agrees to go with him now for gunslinger Taylor's greatest skill is that is that he can simply read Taylor doesn't know how valuable that skill is along with being able to write that will save their lives in the coming months. Now at their destination at this auto repair shop, Gunslinger hopes he'll run into a piece of his past. So they go inside. Inside the security seems to be nearly non-existent. And Gunslinger Spawn tells him, I'm looking for Wahia. Some of his chair people said I should start here. And this guy's like, well, he said you'll be coming just down the hall, first door on the left. And Taylor is curious as to why this man isn't alarmed with Gunslinger Spawn's presence. So they go into the room where the Wahia is at and he tells him you shouldn't be here not in this sacred space you're trespassing on the spirits and he's referring to Taylor not Gunslinger Spawn so Gunslinger Spawn vouches for him you know Taylor's like yo what's up dude I'm here so forgive him while here he's a bit young and so while he's like well well my friend it's been a long time how the hell have you been my crusty old dog and you know they have a little bit of bromance as Taylor calls it and while he tells him Gunslinger I've been waiting nearly 150 years for your ass to come here and I knew you'll come back to me somehow. So Gunslinger's like, you fell through the time rip too. And he's referring to Spawn issue 300 and 301, which we did cover that on this channel. And he tells him, no, I've been here the whole time since the world changed myself. Watched them slaughter the buffalo and then my people and the machines were invented for World War fights. And our enemies, they've been here too, every day, spreading their evil in many corners as possible. So we're going to need all the help we can get. There's another Spawn now, says the Wahia. Actually, no, this kid is not the spawn. He's just he's just some boy. He's my help. So the shame man gently lays his hand on the boy wanting to read his spirit. And he's like, good, this one's a diamond in the rough. And he's referring to Taylor. You're a protector, Taylor. Promise that you'll watch over our cowboy as he tends to use too much of his necro energy making his special bullets. His enemies know that it weakens him. And Gunslinger's like, man, you're giving away too much of my secrets, and, and you're spooking the kid. Taylor's like, no, nah, I'm not spooked. 
But the real reason I'm here, says Gunslinger, I'm here to look for a list of names. Those names that involve Amy. And yes, I want to know how many of them made it alive to this time. Or even better, can your magic send them back? And the Wahia is like Simmons made the tear. He's the only one that can sew it back together. In the meantime, I need to speak with Taylor privately. He'll show you where some of your allegiance is hiding. So they go to where some of those allegiances is hiding. And in the hideout, before they go in, Taylor asks Javi something. I'm trying to understand what's the end game here because you seem to be a target for a bunch of non-human types like to kill guys like me. Also, why did the shaman say he warned you a long time ago for you to quit all this? He had a premonition, says Gunslinger. About what? About my sister. And Taylor's like, well, was he right? And based on Gunslinger spawns sudden silence, <laughs> his premonition was very freaking accurate. So more silence than Gunslinger Spawn strides defiantly towards an unseen enemy. With purpose and resolve, Gunslinger can't wait to meet the resistance. His body is aching to deliver his own cruel necessity. And speaking of necessity, I need you to hit that like button, that subscribe button, and follow Rated Comics if you like this video and the content we're throwing up so far. Here at Rated Comics, we do awesome comic book reviews, comic book related content with the occasional comic book giveaway. Uh, that was kind of cringe, but I had to do it. You know what I mean. So back into the content though, stopping only once the screaming falls silent, Gunsl Gunslinger Spawn goes to work with these people. Not far away, the echoes of battle have been heard by others, and his bodyguard is like, Sir, your orders? Hm. Well, the noise seems to have died down, Henry. Go check on the boys, would you? And Henry does go check on the boys, and Henry will have to wait long to get that report because Gunslinger Spawn is waiting for him like, hm. You know what's the pity about all this, boy? There were so many of you guys, didn't have time to drag them all here. This is only half of them. He goes to work, shoot some more. So if you know what's good for you, you'll get me your boss, boy. That's what Gunsticker Spawn says, and Henry does exactly that. My, 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 look at what the cat dragged in. Now Gunsticker Spawn, his guns are drawn back and he encroaches upon their boss. And the boss notices that his bodyguards are not putting their weapons away. They have their weapons out. So he tells them, put your weapons away, boys, and relax. Your guns won't scratch him. Ain't that right, Hale Spawn? He tries to appeal to his symbiote sanity, I guess you can say. And so, what should I do about you? Since you took out most of my army, I was growing a bit fond of them. And his cane with the snake starts coming to life. What's more curious is we've done this rodeo before. And I've kicked your ass every time, boy. <laughs> I'm having a little fun with this, I know. You can't win this one. You know that. And Gunslinger Spawn's like, maybe. He takes out his shotgun. But I made a good friend today. He taught me some tricks too. And his rifle morphs. So you want to fuck with me? I got nothing but time, boy. Okay, well, go ahead. But actually, Gunslinger Spawn doesn't have time. In a blur, something enters the room so fast, it creates a vacuum sucking all the air away. Everyone passes out. Everyone except those made in hell. Gunslinger Spawn ain't passed away. And this brother, I don't know who he is, but he actually looks pretty cool. He tells Gunslinger Spawn the boss man is mine. And I've waited too long for someone like you to get in my way. And that's where we end this review of Gunslinger Spawn, issue number 15. What you guys think of the comic book? Comment below, let me know. So previously on Gunslinger Spawn, a new face gets in the way of Gunslinger Spawn's plan. To finish crossing off his hit list, Gunslinger will have to decide whether this speedster is friend or foe. So his entrance had temporarily caused most of the men in the room to pass out from a lack of oxygen. Though, this costume stranger couldn't care less. To emphasize this point, the stranger circles around the office like a wisp of smoke. Hey, his name is Focus. This speedster tells Gunslinger Spawn, stay away from McCarver. He's mine and Gunslinger Spawn's like, then we got ourselves a problem, boy, because I ain't leaving here without McCarver. Focus, at least now, Gunslinger Spawn has a name for who he's up against. Don't know what McCarver did to you, but, or why you're here, but you take one more step, you'll be standing in this room by yourself. What the hell, boy, you ain't making sense, says Gunslinger Spawn. And there's a slight sound of a gun being cocked. Focus, knowing this, slowing down time, tells Gunslinger Spawn, wait right here, I'll be right back. And in a blink, the gunman is dropped knocks out and with focus returning back in front of gunslinger spawn before the guard touches the floor and he's like what the hell just happened he was gonna shoot you he was gonna shoot us so i had to take him out gunslinger is a bit stunned and he wonders why he's never encountered a demon like this before and mccarver is like you're not getting out of here tonight neither of you i sent the message the moment gunslinger spawn entered the building they're coming good because some of them know where your other partners are, so I'm glad they're paying me a visit, says Gunslinger. It'll save me time from hunting them down.
And this guy focused like, well, who's coming? His posse says gunslinger. So he's like, okay, good. Well, I'm out of here. And you're coming with me, McCarver. So folk is like, good, then I'm out of here. And you're coming with me, McCarver. Is that right? Yes, asshole. That is right. And with that, Focus fills the room in a heartbeat with a film of black residue blinding everyone as a small tornado buffets them. And Focus along with McCarver is gone seconds later. And as the two of them shoot across dozen counties covering over 400 miles, their journey ended atop a desolate hill. So McCarver asks him, how'd you do that? And Focus like, don't play dumb with me. You know exactly how I did that. Remember all the experiments you did? All the people who died during those experiments? Well, I didn't and I know there's others like me. They are, but I made them attuned to Gunslinger Spawn, says McCarver. Not yours. That's part of the posse he was talking about. Hmm. Then I'll have to grab that signal. And in a flash, Focus is back to where he met Gunslinger, not knowing everything McCarver just told him was a lie. Here in the air hiss again, Gunslinger's instincts takes over and shoots into air. And Focus is a lot faster than that. Hey, tap some on the back and Gunslinger's probably like, what the hell is going on? I need you, says Focus. And Gunslinger's like, man, that's your problem. Where's McCarver? Far away, just like you're going to be. And Focus tells one of the henchmen, tell your gang their boss is in Guyver Summit and tell him the cowboy is coming too. So boom, he grabs Gunslinger's spot and they go. And like a hurricane, Gunslinger is swallowed into a cone of black flames. Their piercing vibrations are about to shatter his eardrums. As a hellspawn, he's endured every physical type of pain from heaven and hell, but he's never felt anything like this before, like he's being torn apart. Even worse, the pain has only been pounding his body for a few seconds, and then it stops. But Gunslinger notices that, for the first time, this guy is tired and he's gasping for air. And Folk is like, whoa man, most people aren't standing after I do that to them. So who are you, and why are you here? Did did MacGyver's lab do that to you? Nah, boy. I got no idea what you're talking about, but that don't matter. What does is he had his hand in my sister's death, and I was looking for a little retribution before you busted in, and I ain't never seen one of you demons like that before. And Focus like, keep using that word, man. I'm human like you. I ain't a demon. And Gunslinger spawn is pissed. You're human? That's why you're so tired? Then you need to leave now, boy. You made a huge mistake. McCarver didn't send his army so they could fight a human. He's called his angelic assassins. You get tired with them, they'll gut you the moment you take a breath, boy. And McCarver is like, he's already exhausted, Gunslinger. I know how his body's worth. You're both fucked. And without speaking a single word, Gunslinger Spawn walks up to him and just decks him like, hey man, you better chill. And you ain't got no chill, neither do I. And Gunslinger says everything he needs with his action, decks him, boots him, slits him, and focus like, what the hell are you doing, man? That's enough. I still need answers from him. And until I get them, you have to go through me if you want McCarver. What are you gonna do, says Gunslinger? Fight me and his army? Tell me you're not that crazy. You can't sustain that level. I see what happens to you. He killed my friend, says Focus. He's not walking away. You're human. You're the only one they're not gonna let walk away. You should have ran when you had your chance. Now shadows fall across the cracked terrain and the sun is blotted out because these angels are here. And Gunslinger Spawn tells him, ready yourself. I can't take on that many. Well, Gunslinger Spawn's like, we ain't got no choice. McCarver's their beacon, so wherever you take him, they will follow. So Gunslinger Spawn goes in and he's like, boy, you either fight him now or you fight him later. But either way, we got to do some fighting, boy, and we hungry. So weapons fly before he finishes his dive and roll. When he throws his knife at their forehead, that's the kill shot. He realized they cover their weak point. His kill shots to their foreheads won't be an option, so he'll need to improvise. And he knows his bullets won't kill him, but they can blind him. And in any battle when you can get your enemy to shift their strategy, that's always an advantage. A black flame slams the angels like a cruise missile. Though tired, Focus is willing to use every last ounce of his energy he still has. He'll worry about recovering later, while Gunslinger Spawn blasts away. He tells Focus to grab these knives. Gunslinger Spawn then whispers his battle plans to the speedster and then barks one last order, go threaten McCarver. These words barely escape his mouth as the ground begins to tremble, like a stampede of elephants charging. It isn't a herd though, it's a single being. This fight's over Hellspawn, whoever this guy is, but he looks cool and physically imposing. And Gunslinger's response is to charge into any battle to his enemy full force, and I think that's his way of testing out who they are, but he definitely realized that this brother is no 
no joke and he ain't got no chill so he gets decked and cracked and and you know he's weakened a little bit and the other angels surround him outnumbered gunslinger spawn knows he can't win this fight and the angels know that too so they strike in the group but they're quickly scattered like 10 pins at a bowling alley focus collides into the group with explosive force though when he's finished he's barely able to stand you okay boy says gunslinger don't worry about me they're getting up then you might want to get yourself clear because if i'm going down i'm going to take these bastards with me and that is the end of this issue and as promised from the title this issue does end with an explosive bang and that is the end of this issue of gunslinger spawn issue number 16. Now, Gunslinger Spawn had to let off a dynamite in an act of desperation fighting off these angels while saving himself and focus. Now, we go into this monologue like how it's been a short while since Gunslinger was pulled forward through time, landing in our present world, along with hundreds of other unwilling participants from the past. Upon his arrival, he quickly needed a new host body, which he found. He goes by the name Javier when he needs to appear human. And for most of his time here, he's been angry because he got ripped through time through a time rip and he's been close to hunting down the enclave of his enemies that destroyed his life now he gained solace and he was happy to learn that most of his enemies are alive in today's planet but the thought that angers him the most is how are heaven and hell tracking him down so easily it's been a constant barrage of attacks from enemies he barely recognizes what happened to him that makes his whereabouts so transparent Though for this particular battle, the angels have been tipped off by the new hero called Focus, forcing Gunslinger Spawn into desperate measures by igniting that dynamite to buy himself that time. All suffered the consequence of that explosion except for one, this behemoth, giant, freaking angel told him, God told us you were crazy, and he goes in and lunges in for the attack, and you can tell that kind of punch right there has to crack a rib at least. So as Gunslinger Spawn gets up like, boy, you know I want some of the spoke but at the same time Javier knows he can't hold anything back right so he goes in with everything that he's got but that punch that he lands on that giant angel doesn't do anything I think I'm gonna call him the juggernaut angel so the ringing he has in his head and ears since the explosion amplifies as he struggles not to pass out now in this form of a hallucination quit acting like a baby it's not that bad he sees his sister Amy I'm always here silly just want to check on my little brother make sure you're okay can I do that you're dead you're supposed to be dead sis and Amy's like you keep saying that you just need to relax mama always said he was a tighter than the drum I'm sorry sis I never meant for things to get so bad in between us as he reaches out to touch her hand she disappears and she's gone the torture hallucination is gone where's mccarver says juggernaut angel i blew him up says gunslinger spawn it's a lie gunslinger knows he told focus to speed mccarver away from the scene he's just trying to ignite the giant angel's nerves hoping that the giant will do something stupid unfortunately others survive and these other angels came in and their numbers quickly overpower gunslinger spawn and you know it ain't good and that's what happened in the aftermath now before i go any further into the content if you're liking the content so far like the video subscribe to this channel here are rated comments we do awesome comic book reviews comic book related content with the occasional comic book giveaway now let's get back into the content so now there's juggernaut angels like step aside there's only one way you kill a hell spawn and that's to polarize its skull then scatter the fragments to different realms 30 tons of force shakes the ground as he takes his piece of land and attempts to smash his head in and he does but when they go to glow over their kill these angels like where is he the demons escape and they have a conversation amongst others like where the hell did this guy go but before they can finish the sentence and their hypothesis conclusion on where gunslinger could have gone focus comes in and cuts off their wings and by doing that insanity will soon infect every angel's mind so what gunslinger spawned did is he whispered to his ear on how to hurt the angels and gave him his knife cut their wings was all that he said and that was in the last issue that's the only words he needed to speak 
But this speedster, Focus, did more than also cut their wings. He also took McCarver miles away, then saved Gunslinger's spot for being brutally crushed. Those efforts, unfortunately, have taken a toll on him. And Gunslinger's like, man, you're human. This is a wrong place for you. And you don't look so good right now. And Focus tells him, worry about yourself. I'll take care of my own business. And Gunslinger's were like, nah, bro, not against them. There are hundreds of them. This is just the first wave. You need to get your ass out of here, boy. He wants to, but he can't. Not right now, because the experiment that created focus only gave him limited energy. He has to regenerate after excessive use, and he needs a few minutes to do that. A few minutes they don't have, which makes him an easy target as this juggernaut agent throws his arrow at him, focus, but Gunslinger has to go and deflect it. He's not going to let it go down that easily. Then against his better judgment, Javier only has one move, and that is to save the human focus, but he needs to take the brunt of the beating upon himself why he does that so he pushes focus out the way get out of here boy i said run but focus is ambushed and gunslinger tells him get out because they're because they're gonna tear you apart so gunslinger spawn takes out his gun shoots wildly like a rabid savage cowboy that he is because everything has gotten out of control so as he fights his juggernaut angel and gets dex and gets worked and he receives that smoke gunslinger has the energy to leave though barely but not enough to carry another person but how does he leave someone willing to lay down their life to protect him and gunslinger spawn tells you you want to be a hero then be smart and live boy tell others and run against every instinct focus frustratingly knows he's right but for javier it's one less distracting to deal with as focus leaves now one thing about gunslinger spawn is he thrives on being a loner it's when his adrenaline kicks in mix that with the anger he's been suppressing he takes out his knives and you got yourself one nuclear gunslinger spawn hell spawn cocktail I could go for a cocktail right now, but it's early morning here. And he unleashes all these attacks on his opponents. The odds don't seem nearly as overwhelming as he just goes savage beast mode on them. And he takes out their leader. And one way to take out their leader, and you notice how they wear these metal helmets over their head so Gunslinger Spawn cannot easily impale their head with his blades? He tries crushing his windpipe, holding on to that brother like a rodeo rider strapped to a wild bull, baby. The giant finally falls, but the hordes of angels keep coming. Despite severed wings, the angel warriors maintain a fierce level of desire to complete their mission on Gunslinger Spawn. They won't stop until they die or Gunslinger Spawn himself is dead. Those are the only options. Low on power, Javier isn't confident enough he can win. And if he can't kill them, he needs to escape. So in desperation, he grabs a couple bloody wings, uses a necroplasm, and attaches it onto himself. And he gets ready to prepare to take off for flight. And God will deliver his wrath in the way we've never seen before. So he only has one option. Retreat and get away. As these angels get out, they're like, look, he's doing it. It's what the scrolls foretold, that one day the great beast will don the appearance of our Lord and Savior, intent on leading all of God's worshipers down the pathway to hell. Then we all attack at once, says the juggernaut angel. Weakened from his fight and his new transformation, Javier has no choice but to take flight. Elsewhere, <laughs> Taylor's dropping a deuce while playing the game. The phone rings. He ignores it at first, but then he realizes it's the piece of tech Gunslinger Spawn seemed very interested in. He makes a move to get it, and it's she spot. Javi, that's you? No, no, it's me, Taylor, but I can, I can take a message right now. And she's like, where the hell is Gunslinger Spawn? Don't worry, he's out kicking some ass. And that is the end of this issue of Gunslinger Spawn, issue number 17. What you guys think of the comic book? Comment below, let me know. So previously on Gunslinger Spun, Gunslinger barely escapes a savage attack by a group of angels by stealing some of their power. And in some seedy motel room, Taylor is playing video games with dinosaurs and just, you know, going to work on this, like a Call of Duty dinosaur version or Fortnite. Fortnite's a lot bigger game. We're going to call it Fortnite because he's into it. He gets tapped behind the shoulder and it's Gunslinger Spawn looking all heavenly hell spawn like and with the angel wings and he's just not feeling good. And that's what he tells him. So he falls face first to the ground. All Taylor can do is just yell, Javi, Javi, wake up. Tell me what's wrong. Where'd you get these wings from? I said, wake up, and he just collapses right there and closes his eyes. Panicked, Taylor jets out the room, heading to the only place that makes sense to him, 
but it'll take him more than 45 minutes to get there. Wahia, he goes to the shaman, which is, you know, he's meditating, doing his thing, and all he could do is just tell him that, hey, Javi's sick and you need to help, and Wahia is like, boy, you're trespassing. This is a second place. I don't give a shit. Our boy needs our help. And listen to me, old man. I've been through this enough times with him. I don't care if you think he's his strength won't fail him. And this boy's been tested before. Gunslinger spawn been tested before. He's got some damn wings out. It makes no damn sense. You got to help him. So the shaman, after listening, instantly changes his attitude for some reason and then barks an order. You need to take me to him now. And he does that. Once back at the motel, Taylor makes a special call to She Spawn. So wherever at the headquarters, I believe it's the Scorch headquarters, she spawn tells Spawn after hearing the phone call from Taylor, stop with the excuses, Spawn. I'm not buying him. What did you say to Javier? I didn't talk to him. Because whatever it is, he quit the team. I just gotta call something's wrong with him. And besides, he's been acting reckless. And Spawn's like, man, that's not my problem, bruh. Well, he should be. We both need soldiers like him on our army, and you know it. He barely escaped Clown's attack last time. And all Spawn can think about is Clown. He's back, and she Spawn tells him that's all you care about is your enemies. You're pathetic. Gunslinger needs our help, and he's an ally. Why don't you think about him first? Did you forget about some code of honor that you used to have, Simmons? You were a soldier. And Simmons is like, man, that's a luxury left long ago. Just tell me where he is, and she Spawn's like, only if you leave now now on this panel right here for 20 minutes the medicine man has been droning on with the spiritual chance and taylor could just sit back in anxiety he's anxious should i take him to the hospital what the hell's wrong with them is not looking so good and while he ignores taylor as he continues chanting and the gunstick response goes up air. <gasps> gasp for air and while he is like man look taylor your friend is quite sick his wings are from god are poisoning the costume given to him by satan and he's been using far too much power protecting others instead of himself meaning what and gunslinger spawn gets up in pride meaning he worries too much i'm fine and while he is like sadly no you're not your body's trying to bond with that heaven suit too quickly and your spirit is meant to soar but not this way you're still a wolf cub you're not ready to be an eagle yet and Gary Sigurd responds like you've told me that most of my life while here well I'm done being a cub time to be an eagle and while he is like you're adrift now in a world you do not fully understand now isn't the time to abandon your teachings remember what i taught you and the gunslick is like man my tribal training has nothing to do with you and while he is like nah bro it has everything to do with it protect the boy that's your first priority and Terry's like what you talking about me i mean you treat me like a kid well you are a kid compared to what's going on bro but it's all good and while he tells gunslick you need to be patient I don't have a cure for you and his body absorbs the wings and as he does that and gunstick is like what patience that's what got amy killed you were there you know that and while he is like no your lack of preparation is what killed her you weren't willing to learn what your enemies were doing to her those wings are the same you need to be willing to know what they're doing to you god wants you to think they're ready for them that's his trap just like they trapped your sister so learn from this tragedy otherwise you'll just repeat itself guys guys says taylor pump the brakes i mean can we get a drink or something because your boy thirsty we can figure this all out but gunslinger spawn leaves and he's pissed and taylor's like should i go after him and while he is like nah i've seen him like this before let him blow up some steam but you boy we have begun your training yet and Taylor's like, what training are we talking about? But meanwhile, a few blocks away, Javier attempts to hide himself. Though, the quietest of sounds alerts him that he's no longer alone. His instincts kick in. He throws a knife and it hits Spawn in the head and Spawn's like, impressive. But a trick like that, as you should know, only works on angels. And next time you make a mistake like that, it'll get you killed. And Javier's like, all right, well, thanks for the tip. And so now they strike up a conversation. I heard you're quitting the scorch. Why is that? And Javier is like, that wasn't much interested in the first place to me. Then why to join, says Spawn. Truth is, I wanted to get close to you because in order to get close to you, I was hoping you'd find a way to send me back into my time. And Spawn's like, believe me, if I could do that, I would have done it already. And Gunslinger Spawn's like, figure this much. I'm also bothered by the fact that how my enemies can find me so damn easily. Like clowns, says Spawn. 
he's one of them but I'm more curious about Callisto Yostro you know how I could track him and Spawn's like oh no he calls himself Sin now and he's become very powerful and Gunstringer's like not surprising he was trying to steal my powers away and that was an older Spawn issue I believe Spawn 307 or, or Spawn 308 I don't recall exactly but that's a lot that's definitely a Spawn reference right there and I don't know why we don't see no editorial notes on it but that's okay so Spawn tells it the clown where'd you find him and Gunstringer's like why is that of interest to you he killed my wife says Spawn why is it interest in sin now before Gunslinger Spawn can answer an awkward silence falls upon them and then he answers he helped kill my sister and Spawn's like well your weapons let's see how you're planning on stopping him so he looks at his weapon after Gunslinger Spawn gives it to him Spawn's like look here's the thing you need to stay alive long enough to tell me where the clown is you go up against him with this shit he'll viperize you real quick you need to upgrade and with that being said the two hell spawns are enveloped by spawn swirling cape only to disappear elsewhere and they go into spawn's armory and gunslinger's like yeah i could get jiggy with this shit and gunslinger spawn flex like don't know what kind of damage these things can do but i'm sure you're gonna tell me right spawn because we both know bullets can't stop our big ass enemies and spawn's like well you're right cowboy but it sure as hell can slow them down if they don't have legs to walk on and Gunslinger Spawn's like, yeah, be more than happy to shoot them off. But unfortunately for Gunslinger Spawn, his presence seems to have been located once again. But this time, instead of his enemies going after him, they make him come to them. And he goes through this void. And after that, he is pried back to Earth. And the angels there await him like, yeah, it's time for this shit to jump off right now. So they wonder why his trip through the black hole took so long. And the other angels like, he has no idea how easy he has been to become trapped and this guy and his other angels like well he was being cloaked by the other hail spawn it's why it took him some time to find and this other angel from the previous issues like you hear that demon i can find you anywhere there's no place you can hide boy though you not need to worry about that much longer he tosses him because the other warriors know what it means when the prisoner is tossed their way it's a chance for them to soften them up soften up that victim land some blows give them a little softening up you know exercise some authority with them real quick now they inflict as much pain as possible and they're ordered to string them up by the big alpha juggernaut angel it's a ritual they perform hundreds of times though this one is strangely interrupted for a moment by a blinding light then all returns to normal it's time we end this permanently says juggernaut angel watch my warriors the only way to kill this creature is they put a hole through the place where his heart once was and he does just that through his stick and yeah we gotta admire this image right there for a moment that's it that's the end of this issue obviously i thought this was gangster loving gunslinger spawn and i and i know you're loving it too link in the description if you wish to add this comic book to your comic book collection support the art support the industry and also don't forget to check out ratedcomics.com to add some really cool comics and or some of our rated comics exclusives to your comic book collection i absolutely enjoy this issue and i think it's gangster i'm looking forward to how this is going to continue Previously in Gunslinger Spawn, Gunslinger Spawn is pulled through a portal and captured by a, a number of angels that are hunting him down and able to track him. While they plan his execution, some things they went down. This juggernaut angel, which we later discover in this issue, his name is Titus, he blasts a hole so big in Gunslinger Spawn midsection that it appears that it kills him. And he's telling his other angels like, hey, that's how you kill a hell spawn. A clean shot through the heart. Weak ones like this one make it easy to kill through the midsection, and there's only one way to make sure that they're dead. Check your target. He lifts Gunslinger Spawn's head up, and he looks to be dead, or at least just done for, and make sure the hole's big enough to shove your arm right through it, and he's having a good time. I thought he was going to do something very brutal and, like, go up and rip Gunslinger Spawn in half, but no, he clearly thinks that his mark is dead, and it is then that you can put a notch on your belt for killing a hell spawn. So all these kids, or these other angels, are gathering close together this other angel with uh with the metal mask over his face is like well what about his head i thought the thing you're supposed to do is cut off the head to kill a hell spawn don't we cut off the head too no says titus for most hell spawns that's true but not this one not the ones with limited power you can only do that if you want to take home a trophy then the angel's like let's grab our trophy let's cut the head off nah says titus god said she'll do it she wants the pleasure for herself 
kind of interesting that they refer God as a she, but okay, we'll go with it for the sake of storytelling. It goes against the Bible though, but we're going to go with it for the sake of the story. And Titus like, well, she might want the head, but I don't think God will mind if we keep a tongue for ourselves. So let's cut out Gunslinger Swan's tongue and keep that as our trophy. And then a bullet flies over, knocks out the blade, disarms him, and the air echoes with the sound of a gun blast. Back away from him, says Spawn, as he holds a gun that's really massively cocked. <laughs> he cocks the gun back, and there's no shimmer, the cloak snaps wildly, and he has the same energy of a caged lion who hasn't been fed for days. And Spawn is just looking like, do something, I wish somebody would do something. And Titus like, careful warriors, now this hell Spawn is way more dangerous than the cowboy. So they literally drop everything, which, you know, they drop Gunslinger Spawn to prepare for battle. Titus like, Onyx, take the lead and distract him. So Onyx, without hesitation, thrusts himself forward, not giving a single thought that he's about to attack Spawn, and Spawn has got a hell of a lot more power at this point. But the thing that throws him off is the casual manner in which Spawn reacts should be a warning to all of them. There's not even a hint of fear, and it's obvious that this hell spawn's been through this a dozens of times. As relaxed as his motions may be, the angel leader Titus senses that and he knows something is wrong. Why isn't this hell spawn using his necro pop? Because these bullets, these guns, can only do so much harm. And hell's warriors know bullets can't kill angels, so why is this one acting like these bullets can kill him? So we blast off. Boom! One shot does its job, severing an angel's wing, as the angel tilts like an airplane that lost all of its engine on one side, and he goes down for the count, boom, shoots off another angel, and his sphere or whatever gets picked up by Spawn, and Spawn's like, yeah, you know what, for doing all this, I gotta feel righteous in myself, I gotta do this. So he puts his foot on top of the angel's head, at the hands of their own weapon, he slashes their heads off, and every time he done that, his adrenaline kicks in and Spawn is loving this stuff a little too much. Yeah, buddy. Now it's trophy time. Look at my trophy. And this trophy of Spawn and Angel's head ignites at the fire of the belly of his other foes, eliciting the exact reaction he wanted. And guess what? He blasts them off and shoots off the wings. Now, as small as a group as these angels are, they form a line towards Spawn. They line up one line by one line in a linear motion. That way, they all don't get hit at once. So they can close the gap on Spawn in that kind of manner. And that way, they all won't be in Spawn's line of fire, allowing one of them to make their move, throwing the blade, and the blade impels itself painfully deep into Spawn's arm. Instead of shooting the angels with two arms, now he's only got one arm to shoot him with. And again, brings the question, why isn't this Spawn using his powers? And this angel, Titus, like, something's made him weak. Don't let him rest. We might have something here. And knowing his bullets can't hurt them, all they need to do is protect this one thing that does matter, their wings. So don't let the bullets hit your wings and you should be good. Waiting for the moment his pistols run out of ammunition, he attempts to grab another one of his weapons. But an angel comes up from behind and they batter him relentless until an order is given. Step aside, says Titus Angel, that ass is mine. Now Titus is about to do his thing and enact punishment. Their leader is unable to complete whatever he had in mind because when Titus turns to see the cause of all this necroplasmic explosion that happened before he could do the act everything he's been taught about this hell spawn is thrown out of whack green energy crackles like hissing cobras as gunslinger readies for another result now we've been known that gunslinger spawn has been known for deception so it's got to be at this point gunslinger spawn at this point is spawn and spawn is disguised as gunslinger spawn so gunslinger spawn which i'm gonna say is disguised as spawn aims squarely upon titus himself punches him so hard in the midsection that it impels him sending the other warriors to help defend their leader erroneously letting spawn inflict more pain upon them calculating the probability of him defeating these two hell spawns at this point no it ain't gonna happen titus is too injured he has no choice but to flee and fight another day leaving his soldiers to fend for themselves which in his own words turns into a turkey shoot and it's just a bloodbath so in one swift motion Gunslinger pulls his enemy's head closer to the hole in his chest, a hole that is now forms a ring of razor sharp teeth, and a hole big enough not just to put his fist through, but an entire head. Gunslinger Spawn puts his angel's head in his midsection, chomps down at it, the hole seals itself in close, encasing forever another trophy garnered from heaven. Angel falls down. Now, this is a cool part right here. But anyways, Gunslinger Spawn tells Spawn, knowing that he's Gunslinger Spawn, 
mini spot. Anyways, he says, tell me something, Javier. What happens the next time when they come and you're on your own? How is that going to work? And Spawn, being actually that he's Gunslinger Spawn, says, I didn't ask for your help, Simmons, and I won't in the future. Well, they shot me in the heart, you understand? That would have killed you, right? He doesn't answer. Instead, the two revert to their norms. Gunslinger Spawn becoming Spawn and Spawn becoming Gunslinger. And Spawn's like, here's your problem, Javier, and I accept I'm to blame for most of it, but the angels you fought in the past aren't the same ones. They've grown in numbers and they've gotten smarter. That's dangerous for all of us. And Gunslinger's like, man, I'm doing my best, man. That's not good enough. You're not prepared. That's why I jumped to that portal, and that's referencing the last issue. And that's why I had to blind them while we made the switch. Otherwise, you'd be lying on the ground with the hole that they made in you. And Spawn's like, the problem is, I need you alive, at least till we find the clown. After that, knock yourself out. You're right, much obliged for what you did. So as Gunslinger Spawn extends his hand to shake Al Simmons, Al doesn't extend his hand back. He doesn't return the favor. He instead further demeans him. You're a distraction. I don't have time for you right now. So you need to figure this out. Then you won't have to worry about that again, says Gunslinger. From now on, and he makes a transformation, I'll make sure no one ever mistakes us ever again. Besides the face markings, I will notice that Javi's chest symbol is different too. And Javi leaves off into the sunset without riding on his high horse, telling Spawn, I suggest you do the same. Try keeping yourself alive because I ain't done with you yet either. And that is the end of Gunslinger Spawn issue number 19. What you guys think of the comic book? Comment below, let me know. I thought this was a fun read, even though it's straight to the point and there's nothing fancy about it. This is just straight up brutal gangster reading in my opinion. Definitely worth adding to your comic book collection. So before we go into the issue, previously Spawn and Gunslinger Spawn fought off a group of murderous and vengeful angels, which leads to Gunslinger taking on a whole new look. So Javier's growing tired of what's happening. He needs to recharge. He's tired of all these angels and demons, more so angels, heaven's warriors, finding out exactly where he is, his location, so easily. So he returns to the only place he knows, to the only person he can fully trust, which is Taylor. He isn't around. Javier isn't surprised by that. But a nap is all that's on his mind right now. And for whatever reason, she spawn is calling about his whereabouts, but he's not interested. He closes his eyes for some much needed rest. So blocks away, Taylor has a bad case of the munchies, beer and snackies in his hands. You know, them 7-Eleven kind of snackies, yeah. So when he gets back to his bike, these dudes, these gangsters are looking at his bike like, yo man, you're right, it's cool, it's pretty sweet. Well, yeah, you know, I got it back east, thank you for admiring it, but I'm late for something guys, so enjoy your day. And these guys are like, nah man, this ain't safe around you to be around here. We, we ain't done looking at your bike yet, bruh. So they take him by the wrist, throw him back, and this gangster tells him, you know what? Give us your beer and your bike, and we call it even, and Taylor has some words for him. F you, but you know what? It's not the answer that we're looking to hear. So they give him a beat down, and the beating is so brutal that, yo, they run over his hand with this bike too, on top of getting fists and sticks in his ass. Not literally though, they're just going to work on the bro. So a few broken bones happens when it, with his hand, but he somehow manages to get up and launch his helmet at the back of this guy's head. So the rider turns around and barrels down on him like a, like a charging bull about to run him over. But you know what? Something immovable happens. And that's Gunslinger Spawn appearing, stiff arming the bite like an NFL running back to a linebacker. Nah, son, tell your mama to save me a plate because we hungry and you ain't doing no running over today. So you know this guy's gonna have like some kind of crazy hospital bill and some crazy recovery time to go with it too. But you know what? That is a concern, Gunslinger. And Gunslinger looks up all majestic with this new look. Time to go, Taylor. Go? Go where? Taylor don't even notice the new look. You know, those are security cameras up there. They're recording everything. So if you want to have been hiding yourself, they got you, they got me, they know what we look like. I could have handled this on my own. No, he couldn't. And even Gunslinger Spawn tells him about that. You can't handle this on your own. And clearly, I can see how you was handling it. You might have been able to handle it on your butt. No, he, he wasn't able to. So Gunslinger Spawn tells him, get out on the bike. He budges. And Gunslinger Spawn tells him, get in, son. And it's not Gunslinger Spawn's order that gets Taylor to hop on the bike. It's the sound of sirens getting close, so he begrudgingly has to hop on the bike. 
So back at the motel, both men hurry up and pack their belongings. They need to get out on the move. And this dinosaur goes in the bathroom and Taylor's like, see, I'm dumb, but I gotta go pee first. But he's gonna wish he had a stronger bladder because when he goes to the bathroom, this dinosaur is waiting for him. And there's this movie reference here of the hangover, but instead of a tiger in the bathroom, he wishes it was a tiger in the bathroom because that was a full-on Jurassic Park in the toilet. <laughs> but now Taylor goes to another movie reference. I think we're gonna need a bigger boat. And I think that's a Jaws reference. And Gunslinger Spawn don't know nothing but no damn movie reference. A boat? This makes no damn sense. So, in two seconds, none of that's gonna matter because she enters the front door like she owns the place. And why would she? Afternoon, gentlemen. Mmm. Why are you coming back like that? And where were you at on Valentine's Day? Look, if you guys have been reading this Gunslinger Spawn, she made an appearance back in issue number four. So, Gunslinger Spawn knows who she is. They've met before but not in that kind of way. She she came in a more brutal kind of way. So Gunslinger Spawn pulls out his guns. You got one minute to explain yourself, woman. He draws the hammer back on both of those pistols. Obviously, you've learned nothing about how to navigate in these modern times, says Dakota. I'm gonna need you to be better than that. A giant then explodes from the bathroom, unleash an attack, altering its size on the fly, so as to avoid most of Gunslinger Spawn's bullets. A few still find their mark. No, that's not why I'm here. I I don't want this fighting. She needs to stop all this quickly. Her smaller pets scurry down her arms. They're trained to not away the faces of their enemies for the sole purpose of distracting them. Or in this case, to stop his damn shooting. It works, but Gunslinger isn't gentle in the way he defends himself. He gnaws and like, get off of me kids, leave my babies alone, says Dakota, and she goes in and kicks him down like blood sport Jackie Chan style. So his bullet supply, he lost track of it. It runs out putting him in a horrible situation of literally about to lose his head due to this dinosaur Jurassic Park style rated R version. Stop! Both of you, just stop! I can't do this anymore! I'm done! I'm done! Taylor's having a panic and mental breakdown with all the violence happens. And surprisingly, all the chaos does stop. Dakota approaches him and gets all sentimental with them like, are you okay, Taylor? Can I help you anyway? Help! You shove the monster in our hotel room? You want me to like, relax and take a brief breath? Get your hands off of me. Nothing. None of this makes any sense anymore. What happened to my dad? All the crazy shit where everyone keeps trying to kill me and I don't even know why. Well, what's happening isn't about you, says Dakota. You're just caught in the middle of something. This isn't normal, says Taylor. You're all freaks and my dad was part of it. Why? Well, I'm sorry you're scared, but that wasn't my intent, says Dakota. I just want to get Gunslinger Spawn's attention. But here. I'll pull things back for you. She utters what sounds like an ancient chant, causing a dramatic transformation to her six ton pet. The dinosaur gets small and kind of cute again. So Dakota gives him the real. Let's get to why I'm really here. I'm looking for your help. Then Gunston gets all sarcastic like, so bringing demons to attack is how you sweet talk, folks. <laughs> Look, I get the sarcasm. Good for you. And what about Clown? How does he fit in all this? That was referencing their previous encounter. That's the main reason I'm here, says Dakota. I'm here to actually kill him, and I think you can help me with that. Gunslinger is confused by all this, and so Dakota tries to make it sweeter for him. And if you do that, I'll tell you what you've been wondering all about. And what would that be, says Gunslinger? How everyone is able to locate you so easily. And as an act of good faith, give me a hand, Taylor. And she heals him as a sign of good faith. Seconds later, Taylor's hand isn't broken no more. But the sound of sirens shatters that moment of whew, relief. Taylor realizes four cop cars just pulled up. So Dakota's like, that's okay. I knew they eventually would show up, but I've got a plan. So if we want to get all out of here, I need you guys to hold my hands. They're hesitant at first, but they oblige. So when the police storm their motel room, they find the room totally thrashed as to no clues why. And on the outskirts of that town, that's where they are. So Dakota tells them, I can't transport us far or long distances, and we can't take the roads. There'll be cops everywhere, but we need to get over that mountain range. We don't have our bikes or horses. It'll take far too long, says Gunslinger Spawn. Oh, don't worry. I got something better than horses. And with another gesture, she again magically morphs two small dinosaurs to roughly the size of mountable stallions. Woo! Taylor's like, this is crazy. You want us to help you kill Clan and ride these dinosaurs? Gunslinger Spawn likes the prospect of riding again. That's a good boy, says Gunslinger. Woo! Come on now, let's hit the trail because it's been far too long since he's felt the energy of an animal beneath him. 
Jump on, Taylor says Dakota. Oh, by the way, the clown isn't my boss. He's my father. And that's the banger right there. Why you gotta drop us with that? And that is the end of this review of Gunslinger Spawn issue number 20. Now the writing in this issue is kind of clunky, but is this issue worth buying, worth reading for the storytelling? Hey, you know what? Todd McFarlane delivered us some gangster Gunslinger Spawn issues before. I'll forgive this one. It's not the best one, but you know what? I do like the story and how it moved forward with it. So his altering appearance and how this is gonna alter the future. Hey, we could only find that out in further issues. But Previously in Gunslinger Spawn, a change in appearance and the arrival of Dakota starts Gunslinger down a new and deadly path. So they didn't really know what to expect when they arrived. Obviously there'd be some type of confrontation with guns blazing and the violator growling and these dinosaurs Jurassic Park style, hoping for a battle more traditional. Now with the sword and everything else, you don't know what's going on in this panel. So Gunslinger and Dakota miss that mark by a mile. In the span of a few minutes, they went from walking through empty hallways to a chaotic mess that seemed to include in the entire kitchen freaking sink. Dinosaurs, demons, humans, clowns, half-breeds, and hell spawns. This was a show for the centuries. But the real question is, as Gunslinger Spawn is going to work, shooting his way to victory, or whatever he's shooting his way to, or just shooting his way to survive at this point, what the hell is answering? All we know at this point is the clown gave him a wrong answer. Wrong answer, fat man. And how did we get to this point? So one hour and 36 minutes earlier, Taylor is completely confused as Taylor, Javier, and Dakota and her dinosaurs are in the woods and Javier is resting up. And Taylor's like, wake the freak up, dude. I don't know why you're so calm, but he's whispering to Javier because he doesn't want Dakota to hear him out. She's playing you. Wake up, damn it. This isn't real. This is insane. She'll slit our throats. We've got to go. Settle down, boy. I'm trying to rest, says Javier. Is there a problem, says Dakota? Nope. Nope. I'm good. I hope so, because I need everyone on board for what's about to go down. Don't need anyone half in it. Yeah, that's not my problem. Why should I do any of this, says Taylor. Stop acting so innocent, boy. You're already tainted. And Dakota continues, I know what you and who your dad was, and you're both just like me. We've both been screwed by our dads. And this is a reference to Gunslinger Spawn issue number two. So Dakota walks away like, I thought you understand that by now. So like it or not, we in it. Got it. And Javier is like, okay, take it easy, girl. He was just asking a question. He has every right to be concerned. You weren't the most hospitable last time we met. And I think Taylor's just looking for proper motivation. He's a bit green when it comes to all this demon stuff. And this is a reference to Gunslinger Spawn issue number three, which we did cover all of the Gunslinger Spawns on this channel. So Dakota continues, I'm not looking to be friends after we're done with this. After we're done with this, you could go about your separate ways, but this is beneficial to all of us. And Javier's like, oh yeah? How's that? And Dakota tells him, you want to return to your wife, right? Mm, that's my sister. Well, Dakota continues, I want my dad out of my life, and I bet if I deliver my old man into Spawn's hand, Spawn will kill him. So by doing that, that's good for me, and he'll owe you one hell of a favor in return, and Taylor will get to go back to, you know, pop in his heritage cherry. Or, says Taylor, you're leading us into a trap, leading us directly to the slaughter by bringing us to your father. This is a con. And all she could do is look at him at this point, and Javier is like, okay, look, something's about to go down. Taylor's like, I think I got this one. She slaps him, puts a handprint on his face. You don't want to come with me? Fine, I don't give a shit, but you dare question my integrity again? Then I will kill you, says Dakota. Easy, easy, says Javier. If I'm gonna go, says Taylor, I want some answers. So what's the story with these? Dinosaurs are an odd thing to be hanging out with you. And Javier's like, well, what's a dinosaur? Because of his times, he doesn't know what a dinosaur is. Jesus, it's the thing that's on your shoulder. And Javier's like, no, these are demons. And it's a funny moment between arguing that they're demons and dinosaurs. And Javier's like, what the freak is a dinosaur? So Dakota reminds Taylor that Gunslinger Spawn doesn't read and there weren't many evolution books passed around during the Civil War. Civil War, says Taylor, what the heck is that supposed to mean? Didn't he tell you, says Dakota, your cowboy friend here isn't from our time. He's from 200 years in the past. So Gunslinger gets his necroplasmic enrage going on. What's a dinosaur? Oh, says Taylor as he has his moment of relief. That's why you can't read it from Lincoln's time. I thought you were just a dumb shit all this time. Who you calling dumb, says Gunslinger, and he's pissed. 
So after time, they sort things out with their misunderstanding, eventually traveling and transporting to the water's edge. So Dakota and Gunslinger look and they see off the shore. Taylor asks her, what are you looking for? Nothing, but there's an island out there. My dad has cloaked it from humans. And he's, she's talking about Omega Island. So Gunslinger asks, can you cross us this far? Of course. So she used one of her pets, the tiny creatures, the tiny little demons to submerge itself. Beneath the water, a combination of magic, evolution, and hell's darkness collide, creating what Dakota needs most, a ride. Gunslinger and Dakota get on, and Taylor's like, well, hey, how do I know, how do I find you if you guys need me? Oh, don't worry, you'll know what to do. And she leaves one of the demons behind with Taylor. Omega Island is breached after passing through the cloak, and it's force field. So it seems quiet to me, says Gunslinger, and Dakota knows her daddy all too well. He knows we're here. How can you tell? There's no guards or security. He does that when he's about to battle. He gives his enemies a chance to act first, then takes control. After that, <laughs> have learned that the hard way. And we see Clown going up in heaven doing his thing right there. And I'm guessing he's still stinking from our last visit, says Dakota. I bet it's because you betrayed him. And that's a reference to Gunslinger Spawn issue number four and five. So what was your original mission anyway, says Gunslinger? It was, I was supposed to kill you. But as much as he likes playing his games, he's not the only one that can set a trap. I've prepared. And before Dakota could finish her sentence, suddenly some unseen power stopped her dead in her tracks, causing her body to convulse like like it's being electrocuted. She is then thrust towards a set of massive doors. Javi, below is a basement. There's a black box. Find it. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not going to happen as Clown and Violet and his minions, those nasty minions. Look at those minions already ready to attack. <laughs> that's, how, that's how they sound to me. So Clown is like, look, my pets. I told you she'd be back. That's my traitorous daughter. I knew she would return to us, but I didn't think she had the balls to bring the cowboy with her. Not after all I've done to her. You were supposed to kill him, not betray me, says Clown. Your mother would have been so disappointing in you. Funny, that's what she said exactly about you. Hey, fat man, I've embarrassed you once before. Happy to do it again. Now back away from the girl. The Clown smirks and he's amused. So tell me, cowboy, how's this gonna go down? You and Dakota are gonna jump me together? Was that your plan? You surely remember Violator, don't you? And that little swamping trick of yours that only seemed to work if others are around? He's talking about his deception trick that worked on Clown in issue number six, which nobody's around. Lucky for you, says Gunslinger. I don't like it when things are too tilted in my favor. So Gunslinger Spawn continues to get under clown skin as a small dinosaur scurries near the Violator. She can't communicate with her pets, not in her condition, says Clown. Guess you don't know your daughter too well then, says Gunslinger. <laughs> Shoots the clown ahead, which only stings her for a second because Dakota had told Gunslinger she only needs one brief moment of clarity, one brief second of contact that will change everything. And just like that, the odds are instantly even as the two mighty titans are ready to collide, the Jurassic Park dinosaur demon and the Violator. This is bullshit, says Taylor. Elsewhere, on dry land, Taylor is bored out of his mind. He fidgets about warning if he should leave or wait a little bit longer, then accidentally comes upon a missing skull that looks eerily like those of Gunslinger Spawn's hat. He also wonders if anything exciting is happening on the island. If he only knew how big of an understatement that was, and these clowns and the Violator are ready to attack Dakota and Gunslinger Spawn. Look at those clowns, look at those minions. <laughs> I might have had a little bit too much fun imitating the minions, but yo, this is a definitely a very fun read. Definitely an issue of Gunslinger Spawn. I feel you guys should add to your comic book collection. Support the art, support the industry. Link in description, by the way. And also, don't forget to check out RatedComics.com for some amazing and really cool Rated Comics exclusives and limited prints to add to your comic book collection, too. So before we begin this issue, so previously in Gunslinger Spawn, Gunslinger and Dakota are headed to infiltrate Omega Island to take down Dakota's father, the nefarious clown. Now when they get there for the second time since being pulled into the future, Gunslinger faces an onslaught by a clown, but why? Here's the reason. After their first meeting, it should have been abundantly clear that they've never joined forces before. In fact, Gunslinger Spawn understands why a clown might want to kill them are gonna kill him because of the last encounter. That's back going back to Gunslinger Spawn issue number three, four, five, and six, I believe. And which we did cover all those issues on the channel. Check out the playlist at the end of this review. 
But is it all that it is, is just petty revenge because Gunsucker Spawn rejected him previously? Well, it can be, and I don't think it can be, but he'll be damned if he's just gonna sit around, wait around for the clown to confess the truth. No, not while his savage minions want to rip out his throat and they go to work on him like <laughs> So now Dakota, clown's daughter, though in prison herself, Dakota won't idly stand by and watch all this onslaught go by. Her target pivots, which is the Violator, excited at the chance to spill blood. Combined, Violator and now the attacking T-Rex, Dakota's pet, stand over 20 feet tall, weighing nearly 30,000 pounds, all going to work, and making their clash literally shake the ground that they stand upon. And you can only imagine how this is turning out with the ground trembling and all this chaos is going on. So as both he to their masters called Dakota's controlling T-Rex and Clown is controlling the Violator with this onslaught, they're ready to protect their masters at any cost they deem necessary. So now Clown, when he gets up, he's still recovering from the bullet to his head. An indignation blasted from the barrel of Gunslinger Spawn pistol that happened previously. So bullets can't kill him, it can only delay him. But still, Clown must remain safe from any further distractions as T-Rex and Violator go to work because he's in the middle of this of this battle fit and he's only a casualty and a liability as that fact. So leaving Violator to fend for himself against a foe as primal as he is and they just go to work and look at how all this is going on and the art's just super gangster in this issue. So now, Clown is used to controlling monsters and demons, but for some reason dinosaurs don't fall into that category. He can't control them. But if he can't control it physically, he'll make sure he'll make it submit to him mentally. Or if not, he'll simply just use his powers to fry its brains. And the T-Rex is going down, and you can tell that the powers are taking full control over him. Dakota is shocked by all this. You're hurting my pet. You're hurting him. Stop him, you bastard, she says. And Clown is like, I'm starting, but you know, it's all because of you and I'm going to finish this. And what were you thinking? You're not me. You don't have my power. So back up, says Clown to his daughter. All you had to do was kill the cowboy. Nothing more. But instead, you want to disobey me. And now Violet is going to work on the T-Rex. You'll pay the price for your failure. And your pet will pay the price for that too. You're wrong, says Dakota. I chose their breed for a reason. So hurt them if you can. But I swear, you'll never control them like I controlled you. Then I'll kill you first, says Clown. And Gunsucker Spawn goes up behind him with the blade to his neck and tells you never learn, fat man. So he puts the pressure of the blade onto his neck to create a small incision in Clown's thick scale skin. I'll put a hole through your throat, like the one I did to your head. Just tell me when. And he doesn't waste no time at that fact. Clown tells him you're pathetic and Gunsucker Spawn proceeds to slit his throat from the front. And then on top of that, to add more insult to injury, Gunslinger Spawn tells him, I'm taking your ear too since you don't like to listen. So like the bullet in his head, Gunslinger Spawn knows his knife can't kill the clown. But the injuries do break some of the chaos and it causes a distraction, giving Dakota a chance to unleash her full arsenal set of skills. And when she's able to, she's able to inflict as much pain as possible. Her father had always taught her to always strike your enemies at the weakest points first. She knows Violet because of his unique build and she knows of his blind spots, which is on top of the head. She goes to work by shooting it and once she positions herself, she tears at the monster's cartilage and tendons by whatever means necessary. But before she can strap the monster's arms and wrists and tie him up so she can inflict more damage, the Violet has 10 seconds before his back will begin to snap. So the demonic creature has been holding back knowing this woman is his master's daughter. But you know what? Given the circumstances today, no more. Nah, bruh. Bloodlines be damned. It's about to go down. And as the level of insanity rises amongst others, they all have to protect themselves. So Gunslinger Spawn tells Violet to call off your dogs, call off your minions, or I'll take your other ear off. So he tells his minions, leave, go. So Clown rises tall as he starts to move forward. He has something in his head that he's about to do, gaining much more speed and more speed with each step. Hang on, boy, he says to Gunslinger Spawn until he slams Gunslinger Spawn's head into the steel machinery. This time it's Gunslinger Spawn he'll need time to recover. He'll not be given that luxury. Blow after blow lands on his face with the force of a sledgehammer. You're nothing, says Clown. You'll always be nothing. It's why hell made you so weak. They knew you couldn't handle the power. He tosses Gunsinger Spawn around like a rag doll. Now the Violator is mimicking the same pain that Violator is inflicting on Gunsinger Spawn. He is also inflicting on that to Dakota, his daughter. So once again, a pet comes to their master's rescue. 
and it's a dinosaur now, you know, defending the honor of his master Dakota. It's prehistoric versus demonic, and only one will survive this time. So now a Clown gets up and he's like, you know why I sent Dakota after you, Gunslinger? I need Simmons and the Green World to wake up, to pay attention to what Calisiostro is trying to do. I warned both Simmons and Nyx. But Simmons isn't playing ball, but he will once you're dead. And this is referencing Spawn issue number 342, which we did cover in the channel. I'll put the link to that video at the end of this video because you know your boy needs to watch time on it. So don't be skipping ahead. Treat yourself. Don't cheat yourself. Watch the rest of this video. So now that his Gunslinger Spawn's death will be simply be used to garner Spawn's attention. But Gunslinger is not willing to play that part in that plan. He notices a tall bank of attack machinery wanting to take the high ground so he goes up, takes the high ground. Once he's there, he looks for whatever might present itself as a usable weapon. And it's a couple steel pipes to do the trick. Hey fat man, you know what really gets Spawn's attention? If I gut you like a fish. He lunges full force to the clown. But there's something he needs to do first. He catapults past Clown, putting himself between Dakota and the Violator. And this shocks Dakota, like, what are you doing? And Gunslinger Spawn tells her, I'm trading places. You know your dad better than I do. Go take him out, go follow him, because Clown went through a portal to go through another realm. So as for this demon, this Gunslinger, I've taken care of this kind many times before. Now go. So now Dakota bolts towards her father like a cannonball. She's been waiting for this moment her whole entire life. Unfortunately, her father's had centuries to prepare for this. Give me your best, says the clown. And he doesn't defend himself. He wants her to realize even her full force attacks can't move him. So all that's left after her futile attempts is to send her to the meat eaters. The minions. They're, you know, they're waiting to eat. As for the scent of the blood fills the air and these dwarves know that they're about to feast. They go into a frenzy and they await the clown's instruction because they hungry like that. But across the room, Gunslinger Spawn purposely avoids contact with the Violator, carving and grooving upon groove and dodging his attacks. Not because he's afraid to engage, but because he's planning. On the other hand, the Violator is aching to engage with anything, and now the dinosaur wakes up. Because since being separated from this clown's persona, Hell's horned beast has reverted to its most basic instinct. And like a rabid dog attacking a smaller, weaker canine, Violator is in a blind rage oblivious to his surroundings, laser focused exclusively on the prey before him. Look, says the clown, you're about to see the cost of your betrayal, so he tells his daughter, Dakota. Violator rears its head back, and he looks back, and he makes Dakota look back with him. Violator's horns thrust towards the pet, towards the diner, so the T-Rex is now dead. But that's not enough for the Violator. He means to totally devastate his enemy, decapitates the T-Rex, rips the head, talk about putting salt on the woman being petty like that because he is like that. Bones crack, muscles shred until the decapitation is complete. Gunslinger Spawn blames himself because this shouldn't have happened. This demon will pay for that. So the monster unfortunately has more than one horn that he can gore with and he gores Gunslinger Spawn with the other horn. Horrified that her allies have fallen, Dakota swears she won't show fear, but she can tell this is really weighing heavy on her. Pure hatred is what she wants her father to see right now. Even if she dies delivering that very message, she's going to go after him. And she tells him, kill me now and stop threatening. Do it, you coward. Clown tells his daughter, you don't even know what you're talking about. You don't even know what you're trying to stop. If you did, you would have killed Gunslinger Spawn when you had the chance. Because Coliseostro has now been given more time to grab Hell's Throne. And Spawn's help was what we would needed to prevent that. And Gunslinger's head was the bait to get him to do that. Your interference has ruined that. So now a carnivorous pit appears behind her. She's unaware of the fact. Blind rage has dampened her senses and clouded her judgment. So as she gets tossed in by her own father into that pit, darkness swallows her. She doesn't even know yet this pit is near bottomless. She'll get plenty of time to understand that fact. And that is the end of this issue of Gunslinger Spawn, issue number 22, where Gunslinger Spawn has to deal with the unthinkable. What you guys think of the comic book? Comment below, let me know. And also link in the description if you wish to add this comic book and some of our other rated comics exclusives to your comic book collection. So previously, Gunslinger and Dakota have assaulted Clown's island fortress on Omega Island. However, he was prepared with a tiny army of his own. So as Dakota falls down to this bottomless dark pit, you know, she's just going down, 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 and it's picking up exactly where we left off in the last issue. 
But the reason why this happened is Clown got news that his mortal enemy, Cagliostro, someone he hates even more than Spawn, was headed towards Hell's empty throne. When he couldn't convince Spawn to help him intercept Cagliostro, Clown decided to get Spawn's attention in another way. His plan was simple. Kill Gunslinger Spawn and then give Spawn a second chance to join him in his quest against Cagliostro, who recently transformed himself into a power crazed killer called Sin. So, Clown gave the task of killing Gunslinger Spawn to his daughter, Dakota. She had more than enough skills and power to complete her task. It should have been easy, I mean, easy assassination for her. But she failed. She betrayed him. So, Clown goes over the pit to make sure that she falls down to her impending death. Because her punishment is the Black Pit, she knows if she's gonna die, she's taking somebody else with her. So, she drags her whip around his neck and drags the clown to the bottomless pit. She swears she won't be alone in doing this punishment. So, the horror of the fact that sends Clown's minions into a frenzy. They're scared. They're freaky like, yo, what happened to our master? But like dogs whose legs have just been broken, they're go to the pit to make sure like, hey man, is our master gonna go down there? So while Violator thrashes a gourd gunslinger spawn, he's still impelled on one of its horns and gunslinger spawns like, yo man, clowns down the pit? I can kind of get jiggy with this. I mean, forget my pain for a little bit. But concerned too about the disappearance of his master, Violator needs to be able to see what's happening. And having a ragdoll victim dangling in front of him blocks his vision. So Violator naturally scrapes Gunslinger spawn up off of him, joining the clowns and the other pets staring down into the abyss. So as Gunslinger spawn's guts drip onto the floor, he struggles to catch his own breath. Ultimately, Violet determines there's only one thing left to do, and that is to kill that mofo. It's all your fault. You got to die, my brother. They surround him. But one little minion seems a little bit more zealous than the rest. He goes up to him. So before he like bites him, but unfortunately, Gunslinger is equally unrestful. So Gunslinger Spawn does what's most natural for him. He guts the mofo in the midsection by shooting his pistola. Because guess what, his guts won't be the only one that's spilled on the floor, but it gives his enemies their opening. So even though Gunslinger Spawn's distracted and his enemies have to go in, well, it ain't no more distraction no more because sometimes if you're going to war and plan on surviving, it's better to be more lucky than skilled. So as Javi and the dinosaur hit the ground running, they find out later that Dakota sent a distress signal when one of her dinosaurs got, you know, his head decapitated by the Violator. And that was in issue number 22 of Gunslinger Spawn, in the previous issue. So the signal alerted this Jurassic Park reptile and they go at it. So the Violator takes the head of the decapitated brother or sister and just hurls it at Taylor. Go down for the count. And the thing is, this dinosaur's pissed. Like, you're gonna mortally wound my sibling? Yo, that's gonna add more chaos to the mix and carnage. And Taylor, when he's on the ground, he gets, you know, <laughs> bitten on the calf. And, you know, that's got to be painful right there. But, you know, nothing fatal. Not yet. So, while in the pit, Dakota and her father catch their near descent. They fall to the ground and they land. She jerks her whip as hard as she can, taking satisfaction from her dad's painful fall. He lands on the ground face first and she likes it like that. But as she goes to the walls, the walls are too smooth. There's nothing to grip. But she instead, she fires a crack. A sliver of light fighting to break through. Curiously, she probes it with hopes of a possible escape. But when her hand makes contact, her entire body emanates light. Dakota doesn't feel pain, in fact. For a few brief seconds, she feels nothing but a potential escape. But the effect of her touch has triggered the crack slowly begin to seal itself. And Clown had a revelation that this is a pit Cagliostro was imprisoned in before he became Sin. So he tells Dakota to get away from there. His newfound powers must have come from the origin of that light. He's referring to Sin. So Dakota's like, you want me to move? Then move me, bruh. Uh-uh, you don't get it. That's how Sin found a path back to hell, the little fissure. He can't get to the empty throne first. Now. Get out of my way so I can hunt him down. I won't need you or Spawn anymore. And forgive the little caption mishaps right there. You know, editors and illustrators and pencilers are all on the deadline here, right? So Dakota's like, you know what? You just want to be king. That's why you killed my pets. You are selfish. And let me tell you something, father. Why do you think I chose the dinosaurs? Because I knew every second of my life you only cared about yourself. 
no one else. I prayed every day you'd change, but you never did. So when Spawn ripped a hole in the time fabric, I went in while others came out and I don't care. And I didn't care where I landed. I was done with everything, but guess what? It didn't kill me. It revived me. I saw the beauty of life again, says Dakota, all around me, a time before men and demons spoiled it, filled with magnificent beasts as far as I can see. And before the rip resealed, I took some of them with me, back where I could study them and train them. Then because I have your tainted blood in me, I was also able to transform them into whatever creature I chose. Creatures only I can control, not you. So you want to go past me? Tell me who my mother is, says Dakota. Oh, that's not going to happen, little girl, says Clown, but I'll let you live. I'll let you live so you can do that and discover that for yourself, who she was on your own. Uh -uh, I ain't going to tell you. Otherwise, I'm fine dying down here, right next to you, or I can get you out of my way. So she weighs her options. So she steps away from the crack. When he hits the wall, light explodes. Now back up top, Gunslinger Spawn is going ham with this blam, blam gunfire. So Gunslinger Spawn now fully healed is trying to disable his opponent. Just as the cavalry arrives, well, guess what? Dakota comes in and says, I've had enough. A force field does its part while her giant does the rest. And these dinosaurs, that T-Rex, Jurassic Park Rex, goes in and chomps down because he's hungry for some snackies. So now I'm snacky minions. So Dakota looks at the violator like, you're next. Gunslinger joins her left flank and the T-Rex is on the right. He's surrounded and Dakota tells him point blank like you can't take us all on and the violator knows that she's right. And being that he knows that she's right, he growls towards a few remaining minions on his side like come over here kids. It's time for all of them to leave and fight these enemies another day. For now, rejoining their master by following his putrid scent down in the abyss. That's all that matters to them. So they jump down the pit go in and unconcerned about her enemy's fate dakota needs to mourn instead for the other dinosaur her other pet and gunslinger's like you okay anything we could do yes hunt down my father and then kill the bastard this one will help you i've heard you can't travel in the shadow says dakota which is true that's been established in previous issues so dakota tells him you know how to get close to those that you hate but your motorcycle will give you away but now when you, and only you, touch this baby's head, you'll have your steed. So Taylor's like, are you saying this thing is going to turn into like a horse or something? Ooh, kind of, says Dakota. So Hellspawn, when you're done killing those that hurt your sister, my father's head needs to be next on your list. Deal? So get his ass. And Gunslinger Spawn's like, oh no, we got ourselves a deal, baby girl. So good. Now let's get off this godforsaken island and she goes into this portal and they ride off into the sunset or walk off into the sunset so to speak. And this is the end of Gunslinger Spawn issue number 23 and this is Gunslinger Spawn's choice to trust Dakota or to die. I think he's going to go ahead and trust her but you know what given how this comic's been playing out lately there's a whole lot of plot twists and a whole lot of action that I'm all about seeing. So what you guys think of the comic book comment below let me know. So previously in the previous issue, Gunslinger Spawn and Dakota barely made it out alive with their battle against the clown. And now, Dakota gave Javi a gift as a thank you. So we go into this trance where Taylor's having. He doesn't know why it comes or where it hides when it's not there. Either way, Taylor's never had control over it. And that's the part that scares him the most because when he was a child, the doctors told his mother he'll grow out of it, that it was just a mild panic attack. Now nah, he's going through a trance right now like it's Hellraiser movie style kind of deal, you know? And because he kept going through this as a child, the mental toll it took on Taylor's adolescent psyche will never be known. But someone could have helped him. They just chose not to. And that someone was his dad. He left his son to deal with his apparent affliction, not once uttering a word to assure his son that he what he was going through was normal. By normal, he meant with regard to his dad having a bloodline and a connection to heaven's elite warriors, the angels, that his father married a human woman and had a son named Taylor, him. And he kept silent about all of that. Instead, he chose to let him suffer that every single single day. So now Taylor wakes up from this trance, this panic attack. He's like, nah, no more pain. And Javi's like, easy boy, easy. You're all right, all right? Oh, 
you know so even that little dinosaur that little gift from dakota from the previous issue tends to have an affliction towards taylor and genuinely is concerned for him so taylor's like i just need a minute man i just need to rest all right and then as he gets some rest and he looks at javi's arm and his scar he's like whoa where'd you get those cuts from javi's like don't put don't worry about it he puts his sleeve down and taylor notices that hey javi's got more scars in the stomach i guess it's just kind of friendly reminding us that hey i know taylor's going through a lot but javi's got some scars of his own too mind your business boy says javi so they get up the dinosaur licks him now the dinosaur goes into javi's jacket and javi realized well she fits in my pocket perfectly and gunstick responds like i just have to pull her up because it's time to go on my revenge path all right so the tiny dinosaur scurries between javier's legs and javier forms back into his form gunslinger spawn so a quick light show happens then a deafening sound explodes it instinctively knows that it's not been summoned as a merely a mode of transportation no it's been summoned as a hellish force of nature so as gunslinger spawn adjusts himself atop his mount he feels a sense of comfort one that's been stripped away from him since his arrival to the modern times a comfort that'll lead to limitless bloodshed and he's ready to go and taylor's like yo man where you going and even though gunslinger spawn just rides away doesn't say a word he's going to atone for the loss of his sister and to make them pay for every scar carved into his body so two hours later he arrives at his destination or at least one of his destinations and it's the shaman and he tells gunslinger when did you notice the boy's condition just recently yeah he seemed fine last night or at least until last night and then this guy is like then you weren't paying attention as usual i sensed it last time i saw you guys his bloodline it's poisoning him he can't be left alone not now i know says gunslinger it's why i'm here i don't have time to take care of him i don't have time to take care of his needs you need to take care of this and he just looks at him like so you're really gonna abandon him did you hear what i said he's dying gunslinger's like he's a distraction you're the medicine man the great shaman i'm asking you go help him shaman's like why so you can seek out your revenge i taught you better than that nah bro you taught me how to hunt and i'm trying to do that but not with the sick kid at my side he'll get us both killed they'll kill us both they can wait says the shaman no they can't wait revenge is a dish best served right freaking now and all i've been doing is putting them off no more it's time and the shaman is disappointed like then there's a sickness in you too and gunslick responds like that's all right if wanting to wipe their evil face off the face of the earth is wrong then i've been sick sick for a very long time so in this panel right here we see sharon on a phone call with her boyfriend thomas and she's having a good time putting the lipstick on she gets out the bathroom and she tells this guy um excuse me i think that's my table hello sharon please sit down we need to talk as he has that eerie shadow on his face she sits down and he tells her seems like you're not keeping up with your end of the bargain your boyfriend thomas or timmy whatever you were going to get him to join our side remember and sharon's like i've tried but he doesn't want to he won't listen to me he's too honest we're not really giving much glimpse of what's going on here but later on we'll get revealed a little bit at a time and he tells her if you want the rest of your money then you gotta try harder by the way how's your kid doing anyway but yeah you know he has that leverage over her too so he tells her i bet he'll be doing a lot better if he could pay for his operation right well here's a small gift you could pawn for cash we got more gifts for you all right but we need your boyfriend to commit by friday got it and that's the string attached right there that's his leverage yes says sharon i got it he gets up and once again that eerie shadow all over his face so you already know that's one of the person that did something against the response sister amy don't make me ask you again he gets up he leaves he goes outside he notices his car his tires have been caught what the hmm says gunslinger who could have cut your wheels like that you don't know it yet dude but you just messed with the wrong guy uh-uh says javi i got the exact guy i want you're a dead man you hear me Javi's like, well, dead man, this. Boom, you got the Siri case of being Molly Watt right now. He transforms back to his natural state, saying nothing as his eyes and his buoy knife just glow green and he's ready to go at it. He's not planning on wasting any of his time with any of this low level punk, so he's going to make this quick. He needs information and he needs information fast. When it comes to torture, you show him what you're willing to do by cutting off his fingers, and Javi tells him, or now Gunstaker Spawn tells him, you got eight good ones left. Don't make me take any more because men like you never tell me what i need to hear the first time around 
usually it takes some prodding. So I figure I start the prodding first and then I'm going to ask you a few questions and you're going to respond yes or no. Any other words that come from your mouth, you lose more fingers. You got it? So the guy got it. He clearly gets it. Did you come to the time rip with Casey Winston, says Gunslinger Spawn. His answer is yes. Minutes later, he only has one last question left. And I clearly see the guy didn't lose any more fingers. So he's been playing fairly here. Well, maybe unfairly, but he got played. But he's been playing the game. So Gunslinger Spawn tells him, I've told you got something that belongs to me. And I want it back. So... Hmm, we'll find out what that is. Later that night, Sharon goes home, tells Thomas, you know what? You got to join. And Thomas like, look, too late for that. You know, you're supposed to let go of your past. It breaks my heart that you're doing this. And Sharon's like, it pisses me off. Like, you see the tear and desperation in her eye that she has to do this. But Thomas, you know, I can't do on. I can't do it. I can't continue with your lies. I just don't trust you anymore. And that breaks my heart, too goodbye so now devastated sharon feels like she's about to vomit how is she going to take care for her child food medicine the rent how can she manage any of that now in the midst of her self-loathing she hears it and that's the cry of her needy baby so she goes down the hallway turns on the light when she turns on the light she discovers gunslinger spawn leave the lights off says gunslinger spawn he stands over the crib chest heaving as the anger inside him grows and sharon's like please don't hurt him take it out on me just don't hurt him i'm told he needs a doctor says gunslinger yes he also needs a mother that's alive hmm says gunslinger all he can do is just make eye contact with her and see that she's being for real so get the necklace you took tonight and she gets the necklace he checks the back to confirm its authenticity and it is authentic all right amy my sweet sister so again gunslinger spawn asks her they tested him with their drugs didn't they and she nods yes after he leaves she rushes to her boy stunned by the gift left behind by gunslinger spawn cash lots of cash Probably more cash than what homeboy was going to give, but she got cash now. But rent, food, <laughs> medical bills, operations, she's got it now. She then begins to cry along with her child. And that is the end of this issue of Gunsinger Spawn. Issue number 24, Gunsinger Spawn Race Against Time. Obviously, he's racing against time because he's his own enemy right now. He wants his revenge and he wants it now. But Taylor actually proves that he's needing him more than ever at this point. So I don't know how this is going to tie into with Gunsinger Spawn, you know, going on with this revenge. What needs does Taylor need? How this story is all going to come together. But I like the build up here and pacing that goes along with it because, you know, the next issue too, it's going to be a banger. With that being said what you guys think of the comic book comment below let me know so previously in gunslinger spawn so after gunslinger receives his dinosaur gift from dakota gunslinger continues to hunt for those who had destroyed his family so we begin this issue with these guys in the warehouse most of the men who work in this warehouse have long ago given up leading any type of normal life hey you know what i work at a casino so i know what kind of normal life you're kind of giving up or normal schedule so to speak so the hours are night and dawn and you know what the pay is crap but hey you know they've been doing it for years because ultimately they know no other way in life and they're quite loyal but as this guy's driving off with barrels in the truck for whatever reason whatsoever it's not important what is important is this guy hasn't seen a horse in these parts for years and this horse is just like in the road the guy has to stop and when he stops and he gets out and see what the horse is all about the night the air screams with the horns protest the horse is pissed and this stallion doesn't flinch in fact he is challenging both the giant rig and the driver and he's like <laughs> so he asserts himself and the guy's like is this a freaking joke Nah, bruh, it ain't no joke. It's a nightmare. The horse bucks him, so to speak. The guys fall to the ground. He runs back to the truck, and he's like, nah, I can't deal with this. But you know what? That nightmare is about to become really real because as a knife goes behind his neck, Gunsick responds like, move, and I slit your throat. I've got one question, and you better think real hard before you answer it, bruh. Those barrels you got back there, you know what's in them? Uh, uh, some type of chemical boss. So you knew, you all knew and Gunslinger Spawn is pissed. So we don't know what he does to him, at least not yet. So at the same warehouse, an hour later, these guys are like, why is Andy returning? I don't know, but I can't get him on a cell. So the truck approaches the warehouse. As one of the guys opens up the truck, we see exactly what Gunslinger Spawn does to him. And boy, that is a sight to look at. So on the other side of the warehouse, a lone security guard in a small office. Gunslinger Spawn's elimination should be simple. Shanks a knife in his neck. 
goes down for the count. And this guy in the office doesn't hear all that. He's pissed. And the reason why he's pissed, because he wants permits with ease and he doesn't want no resistance. Give me the baby, no labor pains. And if I get any resistance or any kind of labor pain, you know, certificate permit kind of speak, you guys will sign your own death certificate. You understand that? So suddenly the lights go off. He's scared, hangs up the phone. Then all of a sudden the lights go on and there's a ring on a desk. But when he picks up the ring from his desk, the knife goes down. Foo! Gunsick spawn, puts a rope around his neck, like a lion, stalking its prey. He pounces on his victim before he even knew something was there. And struggle as he might, this overweight man is barely able to breathe or speak. Exactly how Gunsicker wants his prey. Shut up when you talk to me, boy. And Gunsicker Spawn tells him, the last guy came up behind, got a knife in his throat. Same with the guard. So be thankful this is the only rope that's burning your neck, boy. Now do me a favor, pick up the ring. The guy picks up the ring. You recognize it, don't you? In the distance, the clacking of footsteps begin to echo. So as Gunsick Spawn, he doesn't like distractions. He tells the guy, sit back, be tight, alright, I'ma be right back. So before they see him coming, Gunsick Spawn's already squeezed the triggers, picking them off one by one, and he's careful not to do any kill shots with them because he needs them to talk, he needs them alive. Given most of these are humans, and you know, he wants to let other people know that he's on their trail. Gunsicker Spawn is looking for that smoke. You see, nothing grows one's reputation more than the tales told by scared men. Oh yeah, he'll make it easy. Do any of you want to live? That's what Gunsicker Spawn asks them. And they all nod yes. So he kneels down and tells her, then stay away from the demons, puts a bullet in his head. And Gunsicker Spawn's like, surely you didn't think that you all were human, did you? Actually, they did. They believe what they did. So a line is drawn with the aid of a demon blood that Gunsicker Spawn does on the floor. And he's like, I've got another pressing matter, gentlemen. So this is how it's going to work. And if you cross that line, even one inch past it, I promise you, it'll be the last thing you do on this earth. Otherwise, when you're good and ready, and I like my prey good and ready, limp up out of here and turn yourself in at the local sheriff's office. I'll be asking for boss for a list of the men working for him. And if I hear you're not sitting in the jail cell, your next of kin won't be able to identify what's left of your ass, all right? So now I've got things to do. Don't mess with your boy. So Gunsicker Spawn goes back to the office. It's empty, but he's not phased by it. I know you're still in here, Wilbur. Don't come near me. I'll kill you. And Gunsicker Spawn puts down the guns like, bruh, you have no idea. I want that smoke. Give me that smoke. Make your move, please. And you can just sense a desperation in Bra right there. Gunsicker pulls out his own knife and stabs himself. Now, I'm going to make sure you guys admire that for a little bit because that is some gangster looking art right there. And also, link in the description if you wish to add this comic book or any of our other rated comics exclusives to your comic book collection. Hey, support the art, support the industry. And also, if you use the Amazon link to purchase the comic book or anything else on Amazon, hey, I do get a small commission off of the Amazon link if you wish to support your boy like that. But with all that being said, we got to get back into this gangster ass content. So Gunsicker Spawn, after doing the deed to himself, tells him, you think a knife kills me? Nah, bro. He stands over him like, you know what? Boss style. You knew I'd come for you one day, Wilbur. And you know exactly why I'm here. Picks him up and you can see the fear in his eyes. Your gang was the first to come for my sister. Someone's lying to you, says Wilbur. Amy told me, and my sister don't lie, but let's talk about your wife instead. On your good days, I'll assume that you love her. So my question is, what would you do if someone was going to harm her? What would you do? Tell me. And Wilbur's like, well, I'll protect her. That's why you'll protect a fat man. Plops him back on the ground by whatever means possible, right? That's how you protect her? He says yes. What if you couldn't? What if someone killed her instead? Then what? Well, then I'll hunt them down, says Wilbur. You hunt them down, right? By whatever means necessary. That's exactly why I'm here. He holds up Wilbur's wife's ring. And given what you did to my sister, how do you think I've got this ring? And Nick Wilbur's like, if you touch my wife, oh, you think I was gentle when I took it off? Nah, boy, I was rough. Her screams, you should have heard them. I'll kill you, says Wilbur, especially when I took her fingers off. What's her name again, says Gunsicker Spawn. He's taunting him even more. Never mind. I'm more curious about your daughter's names. Seems like a strange choice. You weren't the only one that loved your sister, says Wilbur. She understood what needed to be done. And why, unlike you, she knew it. She knew it was for the greater good. 
She's dead, says Gunsinker Spawn. How in the hell is that for the greater good? But before you get into deeper trouble, telling me another lie, let me tell you something. Amy didn't care about you, says Wilbur. That's a lie. He puts a knife on the ground right next to his money maker right there. But he ain't gonna be making no more money after tonight. Your wife, your family, they all know all about you and what you do, how you hurt people. Your wife, she seemed quite shocked after I told her everything. You must have told her a bunch of lies too. And correction from earlier, that was a sketch that Gunsinger Spawn did, sketching that knife carving on the ground. So Gunsinger tells him, she'll never forgive you. So you have a choice to make. Let your wife kill you or let me kill you because I promise I'll be back. Or you can do the right thing. And we just gonna imply what the right thing is. He looks at the knife and I guess he does the right thing for the greater good and we gotta admire that real quick. Mm, get your popcorn ready. All right, so elsewhere at Wilbur's mansion, When's daddy coming home, says the daughter. Don't know. He's working late tonight, says the wife. He always works late. But you could tell by that dialogue, when she asked Amy, her daughter, if she saw her wedding ring, you could tell that Gunsinger Spawn was calling his bluff right there. And man, bro, this took his life. But you know what? Gunsinger Spawn's on that power revenge right there. Vengeful, bloody quest for revenge. And that is the end of this issue, Gunsinger Spawn, issue number 25, Gunsinger Spawn's Vendetta, a bloody quest for revenge. What you guys think of the comic book? Comment below, let me know. And also, like I say, link in the description if you wish to add this book or any of our other rated comics exclusive limited prints to your comic book collection. Support the art, support the industry. Lastly, this review is sponsored by Coffee. So if you'd like to buy your boy a cup of coffee, link in the description or donate to the Super Thanks. But the greatest compliment you guys can do is by liking this video and subscribing to Rated Comics YouTube channel. Thank you again for watching. Until next time.